Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome in. Hello, everyone. We are here for our third Starfield stream. Hello. I am coming to you from the kitchen uh, as a shipbuilder. You can find me in New Atlantis. Uh, I will help you build your ship. How you doing? Look me. I lost my, um, I have a, what the heck is it called? I can't think of the name. It's embroidered and you put it on, it's like a badge and like an emblem and you sew it on, like a patch. I think it's a patch. I have a patch and I can't find it. Hello everyone, welcome in. Hope you're having a great week. It is Tuesday. I feel like I haven't seen you in ever. Uh, today we are going to be making some delicious food because the game is out now. Starfield is out now so I can talk about some stuff. Shattered Space, out now. Um, let me just turn this music down. It's a bit loud in my ear. Um, now turn it off. Here we go. Um, so we're going to be making two item, uh, two dishes today and tomorrow from... A, an animal in the game that now I can talk about is called a groat. So it's kind of like a like a, a goat pig thing um, and I've created two recipes. I wasn't allowed to talk about it until today, until the game's released because it's like a, under embargo. But groat uh, pie and groat pizza in the ne over the next two days. Uh, it's going to be delicious. So I've created two recipes and they're yummy. You can use groat if you want, or you can use beef or you can use chicken. Um, but we're basically we're making a groat pie, potato top pie. Um, and Exceed might be able to find the photo of the groat pie as well. That would be really good. Uh, and then tomorrow we're making groat pizza. So spiced groat pizza, it's going to be delicious. So uh, we're going to make it in the pizza oven tomorrow. So we're going to make some pizza dough today. Um, and then we're also going to be making some groat ice cream. So I'm going to show you how to make some no churn groat ice cream. You guys can choose the flavor if you want um, and maybe some mix-ins. And then we also are going to make... Um, there's something else. Boba? Not boba. That's tomorrow. Try boba's tomorrow. Um, that's a good idea. Shattered chocolate mix-in. I like that. That's very clever. Very clever. See if we've got any left in the freezer. <laughs> we've been eating it. This is a groat, ladies and gentlemen. This is a groat. Um, so that's what they look like. The, the jawbone. So they've got big jaws. They use the jawbone for like a worshipping, um, like a, a re religious practice, basically. Um, so they're very sacred e for the House of Arun, and it's gonna, um, they're going to be heavily surrounding and, you know, they're going to be uh, have a heavy presence in shattered space um, and a little bit creepy. <laughs> Okay, groat may be delicious, but I don't want to go hunt that. No way. No way. Uh, boba sounds so good, but I can't drink it. How come, Shay? Uh, before we continue, let's go back to last time on. That was a really bad movement. Last time on. Show it in the last stream. Um, we scared everyone away with our scary makeup. Um, space chocolate, scattered space chocolate, chocolate bark was a treat. The recipe is on uh, yesterday. We're, we're, today we're having a black apron. Um, sorry, the recipe video went up last night, so the recipe is out. If anyone wants the printed recipe, let me know, and um, I'll I can put that in Discord. The printed out recipe. Um, then we have space chocolate. Uh, so astral sliders. We made astral sliders, which are an item in the game. Regular Starfield, you can find Astral Sliders. And so we made burger buns from scratch, we made burgers, and then we did the new arrival cocktail as well. So it was a lovely stream. And now today we are mechanics. We're, no, we're like it, mechanics slash you could wear this in space. Classy. Beautiful jumpsuit. We, so I didn't know that we call this a jumpsuit or overalls. Um, 
other people call it coveralls or a jumper. I'd never heard the term a jumper because we call a, the, someone last year said, oh, nice jumper. And I was like, what? This isn't a jumper. Like, this is, this is a suit. And they're like, yeah, a jumper. And I'm like, huh? We call it a, you could call it a jumpsuit, but usually we would call this overalls. So a jumper in Australia is like a, like a sweater. You're like a, like a hoodie without, like a crew neck, we call that a jumper. I know what is coveralls, yeah. So overalls, coveralls, jumper equals sweater. Yeah, jumper, I think more of a, like a sweater is like, um, uh, um, a sweater is like a crew neck, right? Jumps, a, jump, a jumper is a, a, is a crew neck, whereas a hoodie has a hood on it. Is a jumper or a sweater with a hood. Is that correct? Is that the right terminology? Overall is where you have to wear a shirt or not, not judging. Overalls, like the one where it's like, where it, it like uh, Roselli goes like this and then it's got like the thin straps, kind of like um, Bob Ross or, do you guys know Bob the Builder? <laughs> <laughs> like a pinafore front yeah what do we call we call that a, um like a dunga a dun, no dunkaroo dunkarees is that what it's called where it like you, that you look cute where you've got like the one where they you get the things at the back and then you like pin it up here like a you know like the middle where it goes like that and it's got the hole and then dungarees not Dunkaroos, not Dunkaroos. Anyway, let's continue before we, can, let's go on, let's go do a deep dive into Discord. You guys tell me. Are they, they called overalls as well? That's overalls. Ah, okay. So we just call them all overalls. Like this is what um, you would wear like uh, in the workplace if you were kind of like, a mechanic or concrete out working outside, um, you would have like this type of stuff. But then also overalls are the cute little ones that the girls wear with the shorts or the long pants and then done up at the back like with no arms. I worked in mining and we wore those and we called them overalls. These ones and pots up, okay? Okay, let's find my mouse. There we go. Sorry, call them cover. Oh, Mpots, I thought you were on my team. Uh, okay, so we were talking about cheese on the weekend. Oh, sorry, on the last week. And then this is the cheese that uh, we don't have at our grocery store, but um, Coles sell this, burger slices. So it's kind of like a mix between both of the cheeses that I bought on Friday, which is like a, the plasticky cheese, but then also... Um, Kind of like the craft singles, but then they're orange. They're pretty good. I like them. Uh, how do you feel about this? Hot cross buns, but Reese's Pieces. Or not Reese's Pieces, Reese's Buttercups. I don't really like peanut butter. Reese's Peanut Buttercup Hot Cross Buns. And mm, it's, it's September. They're meant to be a Christmas thing. But we're October now, so basically we're well entrenched in Christmas prep, aren't we? We don't, you guys, I, I still don't understand. Like, I, w I would honestly say, I would think that America is more religious than Australia. And why, why hot cross buns aren't a thing in America? Doesn't, like, where did that, where was the origin of the hot cross bun? Why am I doing this? <laughs> After the 4th of July, it's spooky time. This is true. And I am so worried that I've bought all of this Halloween stuff for Halloween brownies and we're running out of time. We're running out of time. So I'm going to be madly dashing to make Halloween brownies. You guys better buy Halloween brownies because I have all these sprinkles. <laughs> You've never seen, maybe a northeast thing, um, I haven't seen, you've never really seen hot cross buns. Hey Google, what is the origin of a hot cross bun? It must be a European thing. 
According to Wikipedia, it is hypothesized that the contemporary hot cross bun of Christianity derives at some distance from a bun developed in St. Albans in England. There in 1361, Brother Thomas Wycliffe, a Christian monk at St. Albans Abbey, developed a similar recipe called an Alban bun and distributed the bun to the poor on Good Friday. Okay. Good morning. Guten Tag. So, obviously, it's a European English thing that's then immigrated to Australia. Hot cross buns are like a sweet, brioche enriched dough. Um, sometimes have fruit. Sometimes, these days, more, more commonly, they're just... Uh, people don't eat, really eat dried fruit. They're more of like an older people thing. <laughs> Might be. Um, like dried fruit, sultanas, raisins, things. So now there's chocolate, then there's um, a plain flavour, which is my favourite because it's spiced, like nutmeg, cinnamon, yumminess. There's a great recipe on my site if you want to try it. But now they're doing like flavours, like now we've got peanut butter and they've got a cross on them to signify uh, Easter. They're, no, they're not a Christmas thing. They're an Easter thing. What the heck? I'm getting confused. They're not a Christmas thing at all. They're an Easter thing. And they're coming already? Oh my God, I, I just got it in my head that they were for Christmas. But September, October is way too early for our cross buns, considering they're meant to be eaten in April. Whoa. But Australia is obsessed, like crazy obsessed. They, so they used to be available in like March, for, for, for to be eaten in April. Not like you eat them all season, but like they end up in finish in April. And then it was February and then it was January. And now they're like started coming in December, end of December, like end of Christmas season. And now they're available now. Oh my. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, we do not have a high class type of grocery store Wegmans. I think I saw them. No, we do have a higher class type of grocery store, Wegmans, and I think I saw them there past spring. Oh, we like Wegmans. Wegmans is very impressive. Uh, we only, when we, Exceed and I went to Walmart, um, Walmart, Exceed and I went to the US the first time individually, even our second time, we never, we went to like, um, what's that, what's that one that everyone raves is like um, Whole Foods, and we thought that was fancy. But Wagmans and the other, oh, what's it called? So with, so with P, they do the, the, the subs. Is it P or C? That one's really cool as well. Um, you've got so many amazing grocery stores in the US. Um, P and ham soup for Wolf, Ash Wolf Runner. Looks good. Paneer, not paneer bread. Um, it's like a grocery store chain and they do subs. They're very famous for their subs. Maybe it doesn't start with P or C. We went there before Disney, if anyone remembers. Before our drive to Disneyland, Disney World, we went there. Not Wawa's, not One A Dixie, Winnie Dixie. It's a grocery store and it's only available in the South. Publix. Yes, Publix. Must be Publix. Yep. Ribbons Pop. Good one. Publix. Is Publix? That's not on the same level, though. That's like, that's like lower level compared to um, Wegmans and the other places, right? Wegmans, and there was one more. Or oh, H-E-B. It, we called it HEB, and everyone laughed at us because it, it's literally H-E-B, and so we pronounce it HEB. But turns out you have to say H-E-B. But that's really cool too. Um, Night's Camp and it's all mine. I'm assuming this is a burger because Night Camp haven't really given a description. So we usually say here wrong answers only. What does this look like? I would say it looks like a beautiful popsicle. Um, we, we expect descriptions around here. It's not a, a, a want, it's a need. Because you can't, can't assume that people know what you're eating. And, you know, you might inspire people and make them hungry and they won't know what is in the photo. So what do you think this is? Fish shop burger. It's not a burger. It's a popsicle. Thank you, Night's Camp. 
Publix is more of a, a proliterate? What is a proliterate? S'mores, yeah, that's a good s'more. Yeah, it could be a small. Proliterate is working class. Okay, Publix and, okay, that makes sense. Uh, less fancy, more, more for the, like, the normal people, the normal people store. Okay. Musubi leftover from dinner last night works well for a lunch. Cute. Cute. Spam, rice, seaweed. Looks interesting. I have only ever eaten spam once. Um, we did a spam stream. And it was interesting. I don't know if we have any clips, but we did a spam stream once. And I don't think it's bad. Like, it's not something that I would buy. But if it was put in front of me, I would eat it. Um, but handling it when you've never handled it before or smelling it when trying to get it out of the tin, super weird. That's food. Um, the rain was can uh, the rain has cancelled our plans. So ice vanilla latte and avocado toast for Katie 80. Look at her booty cup. Cute. I I can't be trusted with things like like that glass looks like super thin. I can't be trusted with things like that. I have a, a, a two glasses that I bought like mugs that I bought for food photos. They are beautiful. However, the thin, the glass is so thin that if you just like, like cough, the vibration will crack it. Um, so I never use them, but they are bloody stunning. Uh, there, there's food photos on the website that use it, but I, I am too scared, like as a daily driver. Um, that's why I need stuff like this, like aluminium um, metal. I broke a one of these cups. I was trying to put it in the microwave and I knocked it on the edge. It fell out of my hand and then it smashed. So now we only have five of them. Um, I've been very lucky to have three mornings in a row, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I got breakfast in bed of yogurt and um, fruit with LSA and maple syrup and the tea from Exceed. Very lucky girl. On my days off, I get breakfast in bed. Sometimes it's just tea, but sometimes it's breakfast. Um, I love my husband. Um, Nido Burrito and her hubby went out to get uh, a veggie bar. I love his face here. He looks concerned. Um, this looks so good. We don't have anything like this near us. Veggie Goyoza and Vegan Bao. <sighs> Vegan chicken bao. Whoa. Look at that. That looks insane. Out of 10, would you eat there again? What was the best dish? And then what kind of drink's that? Look at this. Guac, sour cream. Oh, are you telling me they don't use proper sour cream though? Is it as a vegan place? Or is it, is it just veggie? Because I like vegetarian nachos, but I can't do vegan nachos. I, ju I just like my sour cream and my regular cheese. <laughs> like, I, I could go vego, uh, and I, I, I like, I've been eating a lot more vego, exceeding I have, but I just can't do dairy-free. I have to have cheese, and I have to have sour cream, and I have to have milk. You can get it with vegan cheese or sour cream. Oh, cool. What did you get? Yeah, we love it. They've been eating their burritos for about 15 years. They've been around for 15 years. Amazing. Good on them. And then this is the burritos. Look at our juicy gal. And the people in the background. Look at that. It's a good bow. Nito does all right too. This is Nito, guys. Nito burrito. Nito bichito. And then this is Mr. Nito. Mr. Burrito. Cute. Um, you get it with normal dairy. Nice. Okay. Shay, um, having some cheesy rum. And thank you, Nito, for sharing. Beautiful photos. You guys are beautiful. Having some cheesy rum with chicken and rice. 
Hold on, wait, what? Cheesy ramen with chicken and rice? So you put rice in your noodles. That's different. Oh, this will be biffa. They'll go. Yo, what up, gangster? How are you called? Um, yeah, I needed you to run, do me a favour, but um, you're asleep. Uh, do no, you... no, I'm all in induction. <gasps> okay, congratulations. I hope you have a great day. Uh, see ya. Love Bye. you. Bye. He's at induction. He's going to be a big mining worker. He's going to stop being a slacker. No. Hold on. Had to kill a fly. Sorry, that was just me talking to my brother. He got a, he's getting, he got a job. He's been working for my mum, um, doing her Airbnbs and being very busy, but um, it's been really hard um, for him to get a job. Um, the mines, because it, it, it's a really, it's a good thing, but it's also a hard thing with um, diversity. They're trying to get as many new people and make the mines uh, a much more equal representation, which is great, but he hasn't been able to get a job, which is hard. Super competitive, yeah. Takes forever to get a job too, like months before applying. Yeah, and he has been trying to do all his mining ticket, like tickets, like white cards and things like that to get um, uh, opportunities. So he's, yeah, he's got an, an in, which is great. And then hopefully he gets some experience and then he can move around. Um, but it's, it's good to see, a, like, um, his ex-girlfriend, my friend Amy, um, she's been, she got a job up there and uh, it's, it's fantastic to see. And I think it's well overdue, a lot more opportunity, equal representation, a lot more women in the mines, a um, lot more opportunities opening. Um, and... Uh, hopefully he's going to do good. So, um, cheesy rum with chicken and rice for a quick lunch. I'm still confused about the rice situation. Chicken, rice and noodles. Mm. Um, looks good, Shay. Thanks for sharing. Let me know about... Rice is on the bottom under the noodles. I don't keep much broth in it. So, um, how come the rice and the noodles? Does it taste good? I've never had rice and noodles before together, I don't think. Yum. Is it spicy? Do you have much spice? I see your cheesy ramen and counter with my eggy ramen. Oh, yum. I saw this and then I said, I see your ramen and I raise you a burrito bowl. Just because I wanted to be involved. This was uh, Exceed Wanted Food. We only had sushi rice. So it tasted still good because uh, I didn't... I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I've already fucked up there. Uh, we made burritos and I didn't take any photos the day before. On the weekend we had burritos. Uh, no, no, we didn't have it. We had tacos. I just added myself and I will be shamed for it. I didn't take a photo and I'm sorry. Uh, wait, I might have a photo. I just maybe I've not posted it. Um, it ain't pretty, but mixed goyos and dumplings with chili oil no rice noodles. <sighs> this looks good. Is this at home or out? I'm not sure if that looks like a um, your hand pad for your wrists. Looks good. Getting a little microwave bowl so the rice was cheddar and broccoli rice. Mm, okay. I've been really wanting to. When we lived in Perth, in um, a suburb called Scarborough, we used to drive to this place called Silver Fern. I think it was called Silver Fern Noodle House in Morley. It is unbelievably good and really cheap. So we used to feed, like, my mum... No, my dad, my two brothers, Exceed and myself. We used to go with some friends as well. Um our old warehouse manager, she introduced us. And it was like $25 per person and you used to eat so much food because, um, like, you just order to your table and you all share. It was unbelievable. But the problem is, is we eat a lot of seafood when we go there. Um, like, uh, um, squid tentacles, 
um, prawn, go like dumplings. Whereas, see, he isn't really a big fan of, uh, so he doesn't really like. Um, in the past, he didn't like it as much as we did. But now it's so far away. I need to find a new dim someplace. I've been craving it. How about you? Do you guys like, have, how many of you like dim sum? Dim sum. <clears throat> you had it at home, nice. And then a uh, little sneaky, uh, sneaky little Messina visit. I thought you got this delivered home. Cheesecake and chill. Peanut butter cheesecake gelato with caramel and chocolate biscuit. That's the one on the left. So this is all ice cream, guys. This is, oh God, I'm just about to choke. Oh God, just try not to get. Yep. <clears throat> um, this place is phenomenal. Uh, they did, I, I'll, I'll harp on about this. They did a special flavor once, which was ricotta and caramelized orange peel. It was sensational, best ice cream I've ever eaten and they've never done it again. So it was like a once off thing. Deliveries? Oh fuck, it's a bird. Sorry. Okay. I, it's a bird, it's a bird. I'm disappointed too. Uh, okay, so eat cake, dream, cream cheese gelato with pineapple jam, pecan, Romeo. Pecan crunch and chunks of banana and pineapple spiced cake. This reminds me, I'm making, Friday, I'm making my mum's birthday cake. Um, probably on stream. Uh, we've got a family gathering on Sunday. So I'm going to make her a cake. Probably on stream. Okay, so that's the, I don't know who eats, oh, it just says eat cake. Um, Pandan, thank you, ma'am. Salted coconut gelato with desiccated coconut and pandan caramel. Tiramisu, uh, egg, masala, and mascarpone gelato with ladyfinger biscuits soaked in espresso coffee. Yum. Milk chocolate with chocolate peanut fudge. That's a boring name. Milk chocolate with peanut, chocolate peanut fudge. Milk chocolate gelato slathered in chocolate peanut fudge. <sighs> Which would you have? The tiramisu sounds really good. I don't know how I feel about salted coconut gelato. I think that might be nice. Pineapple jam, pecan crunch, chunks of banana and pineapple spiced cake. That would be good too. Yum. We're going to make cake too. Uh, try this. Uh, watch this video. It's very interesting. I don't, I don't really believe. A lot of the stuff in there is sugar free and they've showed you what you can eat for a crumble cookie. But then they're using all this like sugar free, low fat stuff on a plate but you can eat, eat there's a lot of calories in a crumble cookie but who cares like at the end of the day if you're just enjoying a cookie enjoy your cookie don't have to feel bad about it don't have to feel bad about food food shouldn't be a negative thing you should just supplement that with other things good things it's all about balance baby uh, fried chicken with baked beans mashed potatoes gravy and potato salad Shay's going to the south. Look at that. Fried chicken, baked beans, and is that the, what's that? Mashed potatoes, gravy, and potato salad. Okay, hold on, where's the mashed potato? Is that, that potato, mashed potato there? It looks like soup. Whipped potatoes, maybe. Exceed, would you prefer Gravy on uh, fried chicken, or would you prefer hot sauce? Gravy Gravy. No offense, Shay. What? What was it, um, Nido? Looks good. Mashed potatoes on the far left. Too much milk in it. Okay. We also had a full chicken, just the breasts are shown. Oh, wow. Okay. It does look like soup. It does. It does look like soup. Don't, no offense, but that's okay. Some people, I like my mash like really thick. 
And that's why I use a royal blue potato. We like really thick mash. And you'll see that today. We're making it today. Um, but a lot of people like, like smooth, creamy, whipped, thin potatoes that kind of like spread. It is a good looking meal. That chicken looks great. What is your secret to your fried chicken? How do you make it special? Uh, new favorite toasty. Uh, Shay, tell me and I'm going to steal it. <laughs> Kitty, I just love to hear how everyone does their fried chicken. Um, okay, goat's cheese, cheddar, tomato, spinach, and kalamata olives. Ooh, need some chicken in there, but you know, looks good. Goat's cheese, good. Cheddar, good. Tomato, mm, nah. Spinach, though, kalamata olives, and some chicken. That's what I would put in there. And that would be delicious. Because that's what I do, very similar I do on my pizza that I really like. Um, okay, and then air fryer chips with gravy and cheese. Do you make your own gravy or do you get like a Gravox pour over? Nice. I made the mistake. I bought potato, um, I bought fried fries, a new brand. I didn't realize they were the thickest things I've ever seen. That was just like a square potato. They're so big, so I, I gave them all to exceed. I cannot do thick potatoes. I like fries or like thin chips. These are too big. You, they're just all fluffy in your mouth. Do you guys, do you like thin or thick chips? I, mm, I like in the UK, they have chip, like they have fries and they have chips. They've got, then chips are thick. Ugh. Just, it just way too, I like crispy. I feel like they're all too soggy when they're, they're fat. You like thin iris? You're with me. Cup of flour, cup of breadcrumbs. Interesting. Fried, fried chicken with breadcrumbs. Okay. I might have to try that. Salt, pepper, paprika, then deep fried. Love it. Nita likes it thick. Okay. Uh, I had got up. Oh no! I'd been given breakfast in bed, so I'd already had my breakfast. So at ten. 10 o'clock, 10, 20, Ixid asked me to have something to eat. So I made him spicy Szechuan noodles. And he goes, oh. I said to him, what do you feel like? He goes, something savory. And I said, fantastic. So I made him spicy Szechuan peanut butter noodles. And then he walked in and he goes, oh. Oh, I was expecting breakfast. And I was like, what do you mean? You don't want spicy noodles at 10 a.m.? Get out of here. I thought they were delicious. They were actually really good, but he just wasn't expecting. He was thought I was going to make him like eggs on toast or like shakshuka or something. No, nah, not around here. I like skinny shoestring, but the hubs likes I shoestring are like macas. They're a little bit thin. I like them more like a KFC chip. But I like you like thin. He likes crinkle cut. Whoa, that's a whole kettle of fish. Crinkle cut fries, I don't think I can really get around. They just, the texture is different. Margo, yes, KFC chips, good. Hungry Jack's good too. Sam tried these things. Um, they're from Italy. I don't actually know where he got them from. Um, but they're like a mini shortbread with lemon cream inside. Yum. Oh, hold on. What's that? Is that my recipe? Hey, I recognize this. One tablespoon, and he's ticked it. Good boy. Large saucepan. Servings, too. I think that's my recipe from a chicken and corn soup. Nice, Sam. Um, chicken Caesar for dinner for Kate. That looks delicious. I love how you chopped it up really small because I think that's a big issue that gives me an ick with Caesar salads is that it, they're so awkward to eat because you've got to like shove your fork in and you've got to open your mouth awkwardly and the lettuce gets all over your face and then it like gets Caesar dressing all over your face and it's awkward. Have you ever eaten a Caesar salad out in, in public? They're the most like inappropriate inappropriate things to eat it is so true because like you've got to shove your fork in it 
And then you've got to like, you want to get a little bit of everything. So you've got to try and get a bit of chicken and bacon into your scoop. And then you open your mouth so wide and you're shoving the lettuce in and the lettuce like as it like skims off your lip, it flicks for a Caesar dressing all over your face. They're so messy. So this is a good skill to have, good hack. We're going to chop up our Caesars smaller. I love Caesar salad, but if you serve me an entire cos lettuce leaf, straight to jail. Oh, of course, of course. Totally. Um, Rosalita, making the arroz con polo, arroz, chicken and rice. Look how good. This looks amazing, Rosalie. Love to see you posting. Please keep it up. Yum. Shat, what makes a Caesar salad that? Is it type of lettuce or certain dressing? So a Caesar salad is cos lettuce or romaine lettuce, bacon, um, and then croutons usually. Then it has a dressing, like a creamy dressing that is like mustard, uh, anchovy, lemon, and like a mayo. It's very, very yummy. So uh, you can see here, she's, and then usually served with an egg on top. So you can see there's bacon, cos lettuce. Um, I don't know if, she, maybe some croutons in there, but she's got an egg. It is delicious. If you ever get an opportunity to try Caesar, it's so good. But just make sure, ask them to chop it up. Save yourself some uh, secondhand embarrassment. Um, Sam cooked one of my favorite Molly recipes last night for dinner. And this is, this is true testament to Sam. Sam takes my recipes and he makes them his own, which I love. Um, Chinese chicken and corn soup, but instead of using corn, he used peas. Look at that. He said he loves it. Second time making it one of his favorites, especially in the winter colder months. It's full of ginger, cinnamon, not cinnamon, ginger, garlic, spices. It's very, very good. Look at a little bit of chili in there. Great work, Sam. Um, Sam's talking about Loon, just a croissant place that's uh, hopefully opening in Sydney soon. He's jealous. First coffee in five days, Grump. Cheers. Why are you withholding the caffeine? Be beautiful little love heart. Uh, threw together a tortellini bake. There's a lot of to get through. Sorry, it's taking so long. Uh, threw together a tortellini bake using some pantry ingredients and parts of the HelloFresh box. <sighs> Wee! What kind of pasta's in there? Can't even see. Oh, tortellini, it says. Um, looks good. What else is in there? Looks like some peppers, maybe? Some bacon? That's not something, oh, we don't really eat pizza, um, pasta very often, let alone to do a pasta bake. Do you guys do pasta bakes often? The last pasta bake we had was lasagna, but before that, I don't remember the last time we had pasta. I think homemade pasta, but it's not high on my list. Obsessed with this right now, fried nori flakes with sesame. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Nido, it's just flakes. It's a big bag of seaweed flakes. Are you meant to put it on shit, on stuff? You're just eating it like Milo? Interesting. We were talking about this brand, Bibogo, Bibigo, that um, I think... Beware was telling me it's such a good brand. Korean, correct? Chicken sausage tortellini, can of fire roasted tomatoes, a thing, a small thing of Alfredo like sauce, and a buttload of mozzarella. Yum. Catching up with Jay over dinner. No worries. Hey, Jay. Uh, and then salmon, rice, dumplings, nori, and ginger mayo. Oh, this looks great. Yum. Great work, Nido. I want to eat salmon. I haven't eaten salmon in so long. Yum. I feel like a salmon bowl. This is the noodles and beans that I made yesterday for Exceeds breakfast. Good. And then Exceeds uh, photo dump uh, beef bowl. I can't remember. This was birria. 
sometimes we do these things where Exceed gets everything in the fridge on a bowl. So we had sushi rice, which was fresh. Then we had leftover salad kit with a little bit of mayo. And then he had um, birria beef and also, no, it wasn't birria beef. Maybe it was. Yeah, birria beef and um, some eggplant parmigiana, all in one. Yep. It's like the, the trash can. Um, no, what do they call it? The kitchen sink. It's kitchen sink bowl. Eggplant and beef, yeah. He said it was good though. Of course, it's me cooking. <laughs> Some of the food tell it doesn't. I make sure it kind of takes like a similar flavor profile. I'm not a, like, I'm not gonna give him like sweet and savory, like Asian and Italian all mixed together. That's a bit awkward, weird. All right, we are finished with all things food. We're gonna get into some food. So if you're new here, welcome in. We are here for our third out of four. Tomorrow is the fourth and final stream for Starfield. It is out today. We are working with the team at Bethesda ANZ to celebrate Shattered Space, the new expansion, the first expansion for Starfield. A fantastic game. Uh, I played it for weeks when it first came out and loved it and I'm so excited for the expansion. Very excited to load it up but the way that I play games is I'm all in. So I've got a lot of work to do in the next week. So I said to Exceed, maybe I'll load it on the weekend. He goes, how does that, how does that work? I go, I'll just play an hour. He's like, mm, you're gonna play an hour, are you? Last time you played, you played six hours straight. Um, that's what he was thinking in his head. So I might give myself like a checklist and once I finish my checklist, then I can play because then I want to play for a long time. And now you need to stream you playing it. We could probably do, if we get all of our chores done in the week, maybe next week we can do um, a Starfield trim. What do you think? That, would, would that entertain you? Would you enjoy that? Like instead of a brownie stream, we could do a gaming stream in my office. Yeah, sounds good. Um, okay, so today we're going to be making groat pie. Is it nine o'clock yet? Okay, in five minutes I need to just put through a grocery order. Uh, unfortunately, we, we've mistake, mis misplaced some beef, so I need to order some. <laughs> Uh, I ordered, I don't know how it happened. There was beef in the freezer and I thought I took one out and I left one behind. And then I bought more beef in my shopping order that came on the weekend and we ate that because I was like, I've got some in the freezer. Turns out it's gone missing. So it's fine. Um, we're in the meantime, we're gonna be making a Wadig Moon. Thank you for the resub. 15 months. Um, need one of the, uh, the mods have posted here, pinned link. Uh, so you've only got 24 months, it's 24 months, 20, God, I can't read. Um, so I read like half of something and then I just make up the rest as I go. So there's 24 hours left of bonus gift subs. I can't extend it. So click on here, read it, and then tell me what it says. I did a pup uh, possibly get a hold of it? No way. It was in the freezer, I assumed. Um, I don't even know what the dog, they wouldn't even know what to do with something that's frozen. Only 24 hours of bonus gift subs left. Twitch will add one gift sub for every five gift subs. Fancy, very cool. Um, and please go and click um, my Starfield recipe. And I posted an Elgato recipe um, video as well. Please go and check out Instagram and comment and share. And if you save them as well, it's really good for analytics. Um, but share and comment would be amazing um, because we the the Starfield recipe was supposed to come out a few days ago, and I didn't realize they were coming out at the same time, but. Um, please go and give them some love. It really means a lot. 
Okay, so we are going to be making these guys. This is a groat. So this has been introduced in the new expansion, a groat, and we are going to worship them the best way we know how, by making food out of them. <laughs> um, we're going to make some groat ice cream right now. Super easy groat ice cream. Three ingredients, and then you're going to choose what mixes in. We had a great idea from Beware to do some shattered chocolate, but what an appeasing name. Yeah, appetizing that groat. It's kind of like a, a goat slash like a, what do you call it? Um, uh, they're very scary looking. Um, it's kind of like a, um, like a, it's like a more of a, like a pig beast thing. Appraise the groat. Praise the groat. Um, so yeah, we're going to be, we're going to be worshipping the the groat, the way we know how is making food from it um, and, you know, uh, sacrificing it, okay? So we're going to start with making some ice cream and we're going to make no churn ice cream because I like making recipes that when you, for everybody, but for you guys especially, I like making recipes for you that don't need a lot of equipment. And if you don't have a stand mixer or a hand mixer, you've got these. Everyone's, most people have these, okay? And you can get yourself one of these and we can make some ice cream. Okay, so all you need, I like, there's something about, I tell you that I love silicon, but there's something about metal it seems to whisk better than silicon it goes whips like it just folds through better when um whipping i don't know why compared to i use silicon in a um in a saucepan but i like metal when whipping cream if we're going to do that i might be lazy and use a hand mixer the green goat the it's not i don't think it's green Wrong button. He's not green. He's just a he's just a regular old goat. Goat. I think he's grey. Grey goat, maybe. Sacred groat, succulent groat, beautiful groat. Go away. Okay. Um, so the things you'll need: sweetened condensed milk, cream, and unless you want to make it savory which I don't think you would want to, vanilla, okay? Three ingredients, super easy styles. And then you can add flavor into it if you want. What flavor would you like to do? What are the, what are the options? We have the possible mix-ins of shattered space chocolate that we made on last stream. I think we'd have to chop it up a bit smaller. But this is minty, minty chocolate. Mmm. Delicious. So, I'm gonna get yourself a bowl. I'm gonna step you through this. Nice sprinkles, thank ya. What flavor ice cream or what mix-ins? We can do a few different flavors. I really like coffee, but I don't think coffee. What are your thoughts? Do I need anything at to my grocery list? Mm 
bananas, eggplant, spinach. I'm just doing a grocery order. All right. Awesome. Grocery order done. And it cost me 10 bucks for delivery. I got a discount. <clears throat> Might cut out a bit. We heard you say something about coffee and then what about you? Oh, you can hear me in my office. That's all weird. Um, I like coffee ice cream, but I don't know if coffee goes with mint, does it? Is it heavy cream? Heavy whipping cream? Yes, sir. Just check that it's in date. Yes. Heavy whipping cream, like that. Delicious, we'll just see the whole thing. So 600 mils of heavy whipping cream, and then you want a tin of ice cream. Uh, sorry, a tin of condensed milk. And we're just gonna whip this. You can use a hand mixer if you want. I'll probably regret doing this. Peppermint mochas. Yeah, does peppermint mochas have coffee in, coffee and mint? Probably wouldn't in ice cream. How come you don't need ice cream salt? How come you don't need ice cream salt? I'm not sure what you mean. So we're just gonna, this is a no churn ice cream. So it means that um, we're using three ingredients uh, we don't want any water. We want to reduce the amount of water because water is ice crystals. Um, when they freeze, the water creates little crystals and that creates like crunchy, um, crunchy, not as smooth texture. So we've got high fat here. We've got high fat from the cream and then the sugar is going to be from the condensed milk and add more sweetness and um, viscosity. But the milk in the sugar, um, in the condensed milk, has been evaporated out, so low water content there as well. And when we whip, we whip this cream, it's going to incorporate little air bubbles, which are going to create lighter ice cream as well. It is going to be richer and heavier than regular ice cream you're used to, but it means that you can make it with at home. You can make it in like a few hours for a dessert. It's just basically like frozen whipped cream. It's really good. So back and forward, back and forward. The best way that has been proven to whip is actually to go, to tilt the bowl and to go back and forward like that because uh, rather than mixing around, because if you go back and forward, it creates more agitation for the cream and it comes in contact and moves um, with the whisk more so it's been proven to go back and forward back and forward back and forward like that and then just change direction change arms uh, rather than doing out like this which one thing that I learned when I was a nurse the one thing that I picked up um, from the operating room is if you have your arm out like this your elbow out you're putting more tension on your shoulder so what you should always do is elbow in locked into your arm like into your waist if you can and just use your wrist back and forward back and forward because you're using less of a lever and you're putting less tension you're still using your arm like this you're still using the muscles but you're just you, um, creating less uh, lactic acid and there'll be less burn the salt is for lowering the temperature in ice water yeah so we're not going to put it in an ice bath no nope, you don't need to Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pop this in the freezer. So uh, when you're churning ice cream, you would put it in an ice bath and then you would whisk because that's reducing the temperature. But usually that type of ice cream um, includes eggs and it's like a um, uh, eggs and it's like a custard base, if I'm correct. Whereas this, you don't need to churn it. Like that's uh, you just whisk it until it's thick. 
and then putting in your condensed milk. It's super less stress. It's only stress because I'm whiskey at my head. I don't know why, just because it seemed fun at the time and now it doesn't. Hey, Kibber, and welcome in. Softy, how's your week been? So back and forward, back and forward, back and forward. Shall we do different colors? Should we do like pinks and purples or just do plain ice cream with the, the shattered chocolate in there? So this is groat milk, our groat cream. And then today we're gonna to be making groat pie a little bit later and that's gonna use the groat meat. I'm really excited for tomorrow's stream because we're gonna make groat pizza. This felt like such a good idea. It, obviously you need to dye it to look like a nebula, like the chocolate. This is so much fun. I love homemade ice cream. And this is such an easy recipe. So the full recipe is actually in first things first, but I, I told you it's only three ingredients. So 600 mils of cream, a tin of condensed milk, which is basically this, um, 395 grams or whatever, and then flavoring, whatever you like. I like to add a little bit of salt in there as well, just to balance out the sweetness. All right, I'm gonna switch to it. <laughs> I'm switching it out. Bit of elbow grease, yes. Three quarts of elbow grease. Or just go into my tool shed. See, I'm, I'm a mechanic in this, this shipyard and I just got me my tools. So unfortunately the time has come, been and gone. I, you know how I was complaining about this and I've never done anything about it. It's out of warranty now, so I'm stuck with it. But it's, it's been good, like I do like it. Um, and it hasn't had any issues recently. I just, I just realized that a few days ago because I got this in September last year to celebrate. We had a big month and we got a lot of, um, we were busy like this time last year. And so it reminded me that this is a year. <laughs> oh well. I need to get some vanilla bean paste. Oh, you'll never go back. That's the, Vanilla bean paste is that that kind of like rabbit warrant or like that, that rabbit hole that you'll never go back. It is so good. It's such a beautiful, rich flavor. I don't use vanilla, ext uh, vanilla extract anymore. Never use vanilla essence. This is insane. It's so good. The only time you kind of don't want to use this, well, I don't really care, but if you're doing like a, a white butter cream, you'll see the, the specks of vanilla, but I like that. Could you use the Kitchen Aid Whisk? Of course you can. Yep. Um, the only time I uh, like this is this will be okay in the the Kitchen Aid, but um, smaller smaller um, portions don't really whisk very well in the hand uh, the stand mixer. Well, no, I definitely need to try it. The things there's a few things around here in the kitchen that I will recommend. One of them is vanilla uh, bean paste. The other thing is chicken salt. So jealous you can get the big squeeze bottle. It's like here, it's like half the size. Rizzo, you want me to send you some? I'll send you some brownies and some vanilla bean paste. We'll, we'll, we can hook you up. All right, look at this. Oh, the price, if, you got, if you're in Australia, you can get this at Costco. It is so much more affordable. Okay. So. Whipped cream, like that. It's a nice, thick whip. Mmm. And now, it's, it's just whipped cream. It doesn't look very flavorful. Okay, I'll turn the music off. As a gift, obviously, yeah. 
Um, condensed milk. But too long. Sweet Nestle sweetened condensed milk. There's not many other, like there's a home brand variation of condensed milk, but I don't really know other places that do it. Nestle's like the OG. All right, so just whip this in. Going everywhere. Eleven dollars for one point nine eight ounces, like twice a month. Damn. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're just outing yourself, Roselli. You know that. You telling me that you're baking all this time. And where's the food photos in Discord, my damn, my damn? You can't tell me things like that. I'll put two and two together. What are you being bacon? Look at this. Busted! <laughs> Look at this. Look how beautiful that texture is. I use it for French toast. Okay. I expect French toast photos in Discord. <laughs> Cheap and easy dinner. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see how bloody luxurious this is look at that you can eat it as it is it's just whipped cream now or we're going to transform it look at that isn't that sexy so french toast and turkey bacon is a frequent meal easy yum oh guys so good so vanilla so the thing about vanilla bean paste is it's like a thick paste Ready? We want a bit in here. And you'll be able to see the seeds. Can you see the seeds? This is why I love it. We did a taste off. Um, we haven't done one of these things in a while, but usually we do uh, like an ingredient and we do like a breakdown of like salted versus unsalted butter tasting and the like what it, texture what it does in multiple recipes um we did something the similar with vanilla so we got vanilla extract um two vanilla extracts we did a vanilla bean paste and a vanilla essence and we tried it in cream we tried it in i think um milkshake then we tried it in cake and was so so different of like have trying the um the whipped cream by itself with extract versus vanilla bean paste and it really cemented my feeling that like the strongest flavor um and nicest flavor came from vanilla bean paste so you should try it do you use the paste in coffee or would it be it's not gritty at all it's not gritty at all so um let's have a put a little bit on my finger Yeah, you can't, you can't like taste the seeds or like they're not gritty at all. It's just smooth. Um, I don't think this is halal though, uh, because it contains alcohol. Um, so 15% by volume. So the cool kids occasionally try and steal this and they just neck. Um, neck is like skull or like, um, uh, what do you call it? Like, um, if you neck something, you skull it. You guys say skull. They try and, uh, they try and like drink this to get the alcohol. Do you know the chug? Yeah, chug. Uh, it's got vanilla extract from seeds, alcohol, water, vanilla, um, vanilla seeds, a little bit of sugar, inulin, tapioca starch, a bit of xanthan gum. So there is 2.2 grams of sugar per serving. There's 64 servings. So per 100 grams, um, 
Hey Google, what is 100 grams in ounces? 100 grams is equal to 3.527 ounces. 3.5 ounces, there is 44 grams of sugar. But like, you're not using that much. You're not using 100 grams. There's, this is 320 grams. You're not using that much. I used probably a teaspoon and there was probably like, um, uh, one and a half, one gram of sugar. It's just for the flight, yeah. And it's preservative as well. So that is vanilla, okay? So when you buy ice cream, you want, and vanilla ice cream as well, you wanna see the seeds in it. It's quality. I am making dessert too, so yeah. I'm more, if you're worried about sugar, you should be more worried about the condensed milk. Look at that. Okay. Mm. Should I put an apron on? I probably should. We're gonna go red with a strip. Nah, let's just go full. There we go. I'm a, I'm a good looking mechanic. <laughs> okay. Um, so now is your opportunity to decide if you want color or mix ins. And what I like to do is put it into a container that you can scoop from. Unfortunately, our beautiful Liz bought me one of those ice cream like an ice cream container. Unfortunately, I dropped it with ice cream in it. Uh, if it was, because it was plastic, if it had nothing in it, it dropped it, it would have just bounced, but it was full of ice cream, so it smashed. <laughs> um, it like cracked everywhere and broke open. So I just use this now. It's not as nice and it's a little bit awkward to hold onto, so you can put it under a tray. This is just like a um, silicon um, cooking container, or like a silicon, what do you call it? Um, a silicon tin. Okay, so we put that aside. We do our mix ins here. This one. Oh, look at that. Can you hear that sound? Yeah, it's like a bread tin. I'm so excited in the uh, summer. You know, I don't know what's gonna happen with streams with the brownie situation. Um, if we're just gonna be cook, um, streaming from the brownie kitchen or, but I'm keen to do some kitchen streams, like home streams still. Um, and I'm so excited to do like ice creams and warm weather food just to make all the Americans jealous when it's their winter. And we're gonna be eating ice creams and popsicles and, and they're cold. Okay. Look at that. Ugh, winter, who loves winter? I love winter, but I also do like ice cream. No, uh, well, I like, Popsicles. I'm that type of person, I like popsicles more than I like ice cream. What do you, what about you? But frozen desserts, we've got cookbook from Liz that, um, is ice cream, different ice creams. Do you think we should mint up the ice cream or, cause this is mint chocolate, leave it. Maybe we should taste it. Look at that. 
That said, it's never too cold for ice cream. Yeah, just eat it with like a pudding or something. Uh, you guys call it, you would understand that. Because to you, pudding and ice cream wouldn't go together. Like a, a cake, a warm cake with ice cream. Daylight savings kicks in on the weekend, so we'll be another hour apart. <gasps> I tolerate winter because my dog is a half husky, so the joy it brings her makes it better for me. I love that. Um, I mean, it'll be minus 10 and I'm eating ice cream, so okay. Wow. I say leave it so the mix-ins a little bit of something, something, okay. I don't want big chunks because it would be super awkward to eat massive frozen chunks of chocolate. So I'm just going to chop them a little bit smaller. So a good way if you kind of do it like this, make it in, cut it into a <laughs> scrape it into a line like that, then you can come this way and chop it. There we go. All right. Now, look at that. It's just so, oh, luxurious. Just so silky, beautiful. Okay, you ready? Oh, look how pretty it looks. Ladies and gentlemen, this is groat ice cream. How would you make the ice cream chocolate? Just add cocoa powder or melted chocolate in there? Great question. You could add chopped strawberries, strawberry puree. Um, the thing I would, rather than strawberry puree, I would add like strawberry jam in there. Something that has less, you wanna, Either you want it to be cooked so it has less water in there because that's going to, whatever, as the small amounts of water are going to create crystals. So you want as little as water in there as you can. I think, I think some colour in there would be good. Let's have a taste. The mint's not really coming through. I'm gonna be sick of eating this much cream. Mm. I could see chocolate ice cream going with the mint chocolate. Yeah, it'll be good for sure. Okay. So, shall we get a swirl? Um. Let's get the purple and the pink, I think. See if I can find where I put it. Chocolate. And we're gonna use the oil-based. Does anyone remember from my video or stream last week why we're using oil-based food color rather than gel? Does anyone remember? Do you remember? Add some in if you think you need it. We'll see. No water in oil base? Yes! Give it in! Yes! Amazing. Love your work. Yes. No water in oil based. Because what does, what does water do with chocolate? We're going to need to get this in the freezer ASAP because the chocolate is like seeping its colour. into the cream, okay. Okay, so into this one, we're gonna add oil-based food color, like that. Bit of purple, 
and we're going to swirl this into the rest of it, okay? Look at that colour. And I find that oil-based, it just, it's a lot more pigmented, so it um, colours a lot more nicer than gel in some, time, in some aspects, some situations. oil based with the thing. It's relatively new. There's a lot more brands that are bringing it out. Color Meal is probably one of the first ones that I was introduced to. All right, we're going to add some. This is raspberry, it's color. It's called raspberry. And then we're going to add a little bit of hot pink as well, just to make it a bit bright, like more the right color. But look at that. See how pigmented that is? Beautiful. Look at that. This is going to make your poop poop be very weird colored. Whatever goes in goes out. Remember, you just you always got to remember when you use food color. You got to tell people. <laughs> How bad does it stain? Um, not really. It's not, I don't think it's as bad, it stains as bad as um, gel, actually. It looks like paint. That pink is definitely better than the purple. That's crazy. Maybe I didn't shake it enough. It was so dark. Anyway. Okay. We should add some, I feel like we should add blue as well, but. And we don't want to mix it too much. We just kind of want to fold it through. Side effects of growth may be very noticeable, but uh, thankfully not harmful. Yes, this is true. Look at that. Do you think we should add blue as well to match with the chocolate? Because that's what the chocolate looked like. I think we need to add a little bit of blue. Let's get some blue. Okay, so I broil and it's green. Sky blue. And a little bit of this glue. Oh, okay, we're going too far. I think it, I think it needs mint. Just a touch of mint. Not too much mint, just a little mint. Um, I think mint ice cream, I would say, my personal opinion, 
I think it's one of the most popular flavors. Do you like mint ice cream? What are your thoughts, feelings, and opinions on mint ice cream? Okay. Here we go. The moment of truth. No, thank you. You don't like it? Why? Oh, look at that. It looks so good. Oh, this is amazing. It turned out so good. Groat ice cream, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, go straight in the dishwasher. And then towards the end of the stream, we'll get this out. She's only bloody gone and done it. Look at that. And then what I wanna do is just kind of I don't want to spread, like, because then if I, sp it'll spread too much. So I kind of just want to. Like that. But then I just beat out some air, but whatever. What do we think? Did we do it? So good. We'll just add some chunks on top. Some shattered chocolate from Shattered Space. Look at that, guys. And this, you just want to pop in the freezer, freeze for, you know, four to six hours and then put it, just cover it in like airtight, just make sure it's got a lid or something. And it looks amazing. Dang, that looks so freaking cool. A great idea with the colours. And I didn't try the mint if there's enough mint in there. Yum. Mm, that was really good. Matches. It matches. You could eat it as it is, like it's just whipped cream. But we're going to freeze it. This is when you would put it in your blast chiller and it will be done and frozen in like an hour. 20 minutes. Chocolate. You can make this recipe. There's there's a there's a video to make this chocolate. It's very yummy. I'll show you the video. There's more coming. Sick idea for a Pavlov. That's a good idea. Okay. Are you ready? This is a, a video I made. So you go to the Miss Molly page and you tap this. Ready? Hey guys, we are back with some more stuff. Oh, hold on. Hey guys, oh. more Starfield recipes because the new expansion Shattered Space is released next week on October 1. And what shatters better than chocolate? All my screen. So we are making some peppermint chocolate bark 
and we're going to color it. So I've got some milk chocolate and then some white here to color it with this oil-based food color. And we're using oil-based, not gel, because gel, the, the water in the gel reacts with the chocolate and makes it cease. We don't want that. So pick your favorite colors. We're starting with our milk chocolate base. Then we have dollops of our colors and you just want to kind of spread it out evenly. Look at that. We're going with pink and purple here and blue to go with the Starfield Shattered Space theme. But you don't have to. Choose whatever colors you want. Then we're going to swirl it to make it look like a galaxy. Huh? Why stop? Pretty that looks. Huh. Then, of course, top with some sprinkles and chuck in the freezer. When it's solid, shut. Oh. Butter it and enjoy. Stay tuned. We've got a few more recipes coming. See ya. What do you think? Hey, guys, we are back with some more Starfield recipes. I'm on the, the Wi-Fi. Oh, no. Because it's a non-normal non stream day. So go and, go and check out my Instagram. Give it a follow if you haven't. And leave a comment and a, and a love heart, which is a like. I would really appreciate that. It's pretty, I still, you know, think it's pretty amazing and I'm so grateful that we get to do this type of themed stuff, themed streams and themed recipes. Um, I, yeah, I'm just very, very grateful. I really think that's a cool idea. I don't really like pavlova neato, but I think a pavlova topping that looked like that galaxy would look cool, definitely. Well, I don't, why don't we do more coloured pavlovas? Thank you. It's awesome. Thank you, Softy. And Rosalie. Uh, okay, so we're going to start getting prepared for our pie. So I can show you a picture of the pie. This is what we're making today. Uh, shattered space themed, of course. It is the groat pie. Took a photo of it. This is what we're making. Shattered space pie. It kind of looks like it's um, under a black light, but it's not. And that's what it looks like inside. It's a potato top pie. So we're gonna make the mashed potato and short crust pastry. It's really easy. It's kind of like a rosemary, um hearty beef pie and like pepper 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 rosemary i would say uh the main flavors and then you've got potato top and crispy pastry on the outside so good you can make it in a big pie or you can do mini ones as well so let's get started have you ever had a potato top pie i know for a lot of you Savory pies are weird, wild. How many of you have had a potato top pie before? Vegetarian, meat, whatever. Kind of like a shepherd's pie or a cottage pie, but in um, uh, with a pastry casing. In Australia, hand pies, very, very common. Um, But we do them different. When you call it, like, a, it's a hand pie, but it's round. So it's a mini pie. It's like this big. And you put it with sauce. Pies, like savory pies, like beef pies, shepherd's pie, are probably one of the only things that I eat ketchup with. Like this is sausage rolls and pies. I eat sausage rolls. I cannot hear this song and not piss myself laughing and see Molly. Why? I've done meat pies, but use mashed potato. But use mashed potato for the top. That's what we're doing today. Meat pies and use mashed potato. Yep. That's my weakness. Thanks. Oh. I actually, I think that should be the lyric. Okay. So I ordered my grocery order. These are the potato size that I was expecting. And this is what I got. 
Expectation, reality. Oh, no, these ones are even smaller. Look at this. So luckily I had these left over. Um, we're going to do the, the proper thing for good presentation mash. Um, and we're going to peel these guys. Honestly, I think mashed potato is better with skins, but it doesn't look as pretty. Okay. Oh, wrong button. There we go. So take the skins off. These are royal blue. Because um, I was saying before, I like a thicker mash. And we, they need to be thick enough that we're going to pipe it to make it pretty, to make it look like the item in the game. Oh, I will show you. I've already showed you what the photo looks like. But that is a rendition of the item in the game, which I'll show you in a minute. The groat pie. And when you play the game, you'll be able to see uh, what the actual item looks like. And you'll be like, oh my God, Molly made this. I'm going to recreate it. Because you have the recipe. Okay. Peel. So just peel. Oh my goodness. You found it. Hey, that's that's a a private moment where I was thought I was just singing and the right lyrics. You know what my uh, my husband said to me the other day and you know when someone gives you a compliment and you just, it, you're not expecting. He told me, he goes, that he's impressed how much 90s lyrics that I know. And I've taken that on board. It made me really happy. Um, he goes, he legitimately thinks that he's impressed that how many 90s songs that I know the lyrics to when I sing in the car. Um, and it was like a, it was just a, a compliment that I didn't expect that I didn't think that I was good, but... It's made, made me feel good. <laughs> um, but obviously not that one because I thought that was a, um, was singing the wrong one. Well, considering how young you are, hey, I'm a 90s kid. I know 90s music. I grew up in the 90s. Thanks for calling me young. But yeah, you usually don't remember much of the, the decade that you were born in, right? It's more like you grow up in the next decade like the noughties. I know a lot of noughties music as well, but my, my mum always, my mum and dad always had music on. My mum always sung a lot, like um, around the house. I was playing John Denver in the, um, and she, that's what always reminds me of my mum, playing John Denver. Um, would you say that you are competent? Uh, what would you give yourself out of five stars? for song lyrics. Some people really remember, I would give myself like three and a half, three and a half, maybe four, but no more than that. There's some people that know song lyrics and especially with the new music, I don't really know many songs off by heart. Um, it's too quick, I think, I don't know. Um, how, would you, how would you fare in a song lyric competition? People like Exceed, he wouldn't care less to remember lyrics. He's not really like a singer like me. But there's a lot of people that obviously like Taylor Swift songs, can remember all the lyrics, know all the songs. But you asked me like how to do, I can do Pythagor uh, Pythagoras' theorem, but you asked me to do a maths equation, couldn't remember anything. But you ask me, you know, a uh, Backstreet Boys, Song, I can I can sing it for you. Just it's priorities, you know. Depends on the decade, honestly. I wouldn't know any of the Gen Z as X or Z Z stuff. Okay, I so said both the boys are saying Z. Z Z Z. Um, it doesn't matter if I want to remember the lyrics or not. I will. They tend to stick pretty well for the most part. 
I feel like there's a lot more music these days. Uh, like all different genres, you know, with the rise of digital music and streaming services, I think that the the pool of music is a bit lot larger from than when I was a kid or that when we were younger. Um, and I feel like songs don't stay around like they used to. I don't know. But also, arguably, we are... Why am I cutting these like this? Um... We're also arguably bombarded with music more than we used to be, where we used to just hear it on the radio or we used to play with CDs. These days, you hear it uh, when you go to the shops, people driving past, um, just knowing a song from social media because it's in a clip, a video. Um, it's That's how I feel like I've been learning music is is just from Instagram stories or, or um, uh, YouTube videos, things like that. What do you think? Jack, Jack, Jackie. Well, I work with Joanne, the artist, and I cannot look at her without getting stuck in my head. So... Joanne now works with you. So she's turned away from music? I think you've told me that before. What's her full name? She does both. Okay. So she just still does music on the side. I like that. All right, so we're just chopping the potatoes small so that we can uh, they cook quicker. We're making mash for our groat pie. I think there's a few musicians out there that really get in your head. I heard a question that if you had a song, one song by heart to save your life, what would it be? That would be mine, Jack, the Jackie song, with no backing music or anything. Oh, my goodness. Um, oh, guys, my order's on its way. It says it's going to be 11 minutes to come around the corner, but whatever. No backing music. What song could I pl sing? It's an entirety. Gangster's Paradise. Damn. I'd like to see you do that in a video. We should have like a mod talent night. And I would love, I would pay to see Beware sing Gangster's Paradise. That's just so unexpected. Wow. Um, okay, for me, his palms are sweaty. No, not really. <laughs> Um, Make It Rain uh, was a song that I, my brother and I used to listen to a lot. Um, okay, before, okay, you've got to think of the young, innocent Molly. I used to know R. Kelly's Ignition, but now you can't sing that song in, in public because it's not fresh out the kitchen anymore. Um, I, I, that would be my, like... All star, get the game on, go play. Hey now, you're a rock star. Um, it always throws people off. I could imagine you doing like a battle and then you just come out with Gangster Paradise and everyone's like, whoa, this white girl um, from, from the Midwest. <laughs> Water. Ignition was a top hop. Oh. Mama rolling that body, got every man in here, pop it. Um, what about, oh, I know what, an e really easy one, smack that, because that's all the lyrics, smack that, all on the floor, smack that, give me some more, smack that. I love that song though, wasn't it a great song? How can evil people have good 
talent though. I heard it's okay to listen to his music again because the royalties go to the victim. Ooh, okay. But it still gives me an ick. Okay. Um, carry me home. Uh, no, no. Uh, Make It Rain by Lil Wayne. Um, oh, what song could I sing with no backing music? Um... Making my way downtown, walking fast, faces passing, I'm homebound. That would probably be it. I, I don't even know how it starts though. You kind of need that backing music like to get you started. Oh, what would it be? Um, with no backing. There's so much, there's so many options. It would have to be a song that was on SingStar. I, uh, they're, 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 I know a lot of songs. Mm, I wouldn't say off by heart. That was the start, was it? Making my way downtown. That's not the, that's the first lyric. Walking fast, faces past and I'm homebound. Da -na 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 -na. That, I don't think I know any of the other words. And I need you, da -na 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 -na. and I miss you, da -na 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 -na. and now I wonder if I could fall into the sky. Do you think time would pass? Do you, if wait, that, that's the wrong lyric. Pass us by, no, because I walk a thousand miles just to see you. See, but you think you know it off by heart, but you wouldn't know all the lyrics. That's the thing. You think you, you could, like, you got it, but I think I would probably do it, like, 90%, 85%. But the, that's the way my brain works. It's like, always say one word wrong. You've gone pretty well, but I do think you missed a tiny bit. Damn it. Um... No, that was right for at least one of the verses. <laughs> Make him awake downtown, walk in fast, faces past, and I'm homebound. Mm. Now I'm stuck. We didn't grow up in a time where we could look up lyrics. This is true, it's so true. You just made up with what, like, you know, made up with what you thought it was. I told you guys this, you know, um, shake, 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 shake. Shake your booty, shake your booty. My mum thought it was the, the lovely, lovely parts. Shake your boobies, shake your boobies. Sounds right, fits. Listen on repeat and look at the lyrics in the CD case. Yeah, do you remember the, the, like the artwork? I remember the Britney Spears and um, Pete Murray album was my favourite. I always thought that it would shake your boobies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are there are song lyrics. You know when you you can hear like mistaken song lyrics and they they uh, what people thought they were and what they actually are. Sometimes there's so many variations that you can't unhear like uh, what that was. So, like, I, there's uh, a song that plays in our playlist that I don't remember what it is right now, and, and Dex has told me, oh, it's um, Fall Out Boy. There's a song, a Fall Out Boy song, and now, now that I, Dex told me the mistaken lyric, now I can't unhear it. I, like, it's ruined the song for me because I just hear. Lucy is a horse... Uh, is it ask horse face? But you're like, what if you were a broke bum that had to record your songs off the radio? God damn horse face. Yeah, maybe that maybe that was it. Crazy. Okay, so we're just waiting for our beef to arrive. Um, for sorry, our, our groat is coming from the butcher. So we're just gonna add some salt here. 
and we're cooking our potatoes, okay? Homie said lyric video for that story. Oh, really? That song? No way. So each star is a word. Oh, God damn. Oh, okay. I understand, I understand that because um, I've arrived. He text messaged and said, I've arrived, someone said. Okay. I'm going to. Ever met. That man was huge. He had some legs. Oh. Yeah. Hair mask. Oh my god, I had a door dasher the other day and their name was Tip Please. And guess what? I absolutely did not do as a result. Oh my goodness. Hey, Grumpy! Hope you're having a great week. Here we go. Hate the silly brown bags. Yeah. I we I would prefer, you know, the recycled, the old recyclable plastic bags. Because you can, we use them for our bin bags. They were perfect size for our bin bags. So I got some, uh, what are these called? Mandarins. Oh! Do you remember last week I told you about my eggplant situation? How I said I, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I bought an eggplant and it was this big. I bought two of them and they turned out to be huge. So then last week... I ordered them again and I only bought one and it come out and then it was this big. Woolworths is like trolling me, seriously. And because they were so small, I bought two. And now I have two huge ones. I can't. Next time I'll order one and it will be this big again. Far out, Brussels sprout. Come on, can I take it back and get a refund? I don't need two. They must have seen my complaining. I bought some shampoo. And so this was just our regular grocery shop. Cheap week. I didn't plan for next week, but whatever. Milk, strawberries, blueberries. Strawberries are on sale, tools 50. And I'm making, um, I'm making carrot cake for my mum's birthday. Has opinions about the proper size of eggplant. Julie noted. Yeah. I just like consistency. This is the most sour blueberry ever. Oh, my God. Guys, it's not about the size of your eggplant. It's about consistency. And giving me what I expect when I expect it. Okay? Set my expectations and then be consistent. Blueberries are sour this year. It's still early in the season. They'll get better. I like eggplant somewhere in the middle. Because if they're too big, they don't have as much flavor. Okay. So we're cooking our potatoes. Now let's get into our filling. Okay.
throat pie. Shattered space edition. I printed out the recipe, so I get it right. Okay, so you're gonna need some beef. We're gonna use half of this. Um, some flour, beef stock, water or wine. You can turn your water into wine if you want. Um, we're gonna need some groat milk. Then tomato paste, Worcestershire sauce, rosemary, black pepper and salt. That's our filling. Potato topping is potatoes, cream, butter, nutmeg, egg yolk, uh, and some cheese, sweet salt and pepper, okay? Super easy recipe, and then we're gonna use a base of short crust pastry, so we'll get that out now, so it can defrost. Yes, so do the cleaning. Just getting what I need out. Okay. Tomato paste. If I was a tomato paste, there I would be. Um, we need rosemary. Here somewhere. Rosemary, fantastic. Tomato paste. I'm gonna add a little bit of this tomato because it's just here. Rosemary, tomato paste, beef. We're gonna go into the pantry. We're back to purple. Uh, we need a little bit of plain flour, uh, Worcestershire sauce, and an onion, okay? So, onion, yeah. I'm gonna go with a red onion today, I think. Excuse me. Um, Worcestershire sauce. So, does anyone know what's in Worcestershire sauce? I know a lot of people can't pronounce it. Worcestershire. Worcestershire is how I say it. Um, Worcestershire. Uh, does anyone know what's in it? I didn't know. I didn't know what was in it, and I don't really want to think about it. But are you aware? <laughs> It's great for flavor. Add some uh, beautiful umami to dishes. But do you know what's in it? <coughs> okay. Anchovies. Hello. Welcome in, Lizzie Bumblebee. Hey, this your stream. Thanks for bringing your community over to visit. What are you guys up to today? My name's Molly. Welcome in. We are doing a Starfield Shattered Space sponsor stream today and tomorrow. It will be our third and fourth. Um, we are making a sponsored themed recipe that I created with Bethesda A and Z for groat pie. So these are a new animal that's in Shattered Space. They're called the Groat. They're worshipped by Hasvarun, and we are going to sacrifice them and make pie. Tomorrow we're making pizza, today's pie. And with their milk, we've made some ice cream as well. No turn ice cream. You're out fishing. What, did you catch anything this morning? Hope it was really good. Let's go, yes. So a little introduction to who we are and what we do is this trailer, enjoy. Hello. We didn't catch anything today. Ah, 
Well, I'm wishing you good fortune on your next outing. Um, guys, if you don't know uh, Liz Bumblebee, please go and give her a follow. Um, uh, so other than fishing, tell us a little bit more about the content that you create and things that you do. So mainly IRL, right? Thank you for bringing your community and choosing us. Go, can we just stream a shout out for Lizzie, please? We had, um, someone was talking about your stream the other day, I think. Who was that that mentioned, we were having a discussion about fishing. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, um, what am I gonna say? So a little bit about me, my name is Molly, and my husband and I co-create the channel. We recreate different food items from games, TV shows, or movies. Just a simple, delicious food. Uh, we have a website, that um, we do free recipes and we're just about to transition. We're gonna be making uh, loaded brownies that will be sent Australia wide. So if you are in Australia, we have um, starting our brownie business. We're just waiting for our packaging to arrive next week and then we're about to go live. So stay tuned if you like brownies and blondies. All right, so we're gonna chop this onion the best way I found is glasses, but a tip also that has been working is getting tea towel. If you're coming over from Lizzie's stream, welcome in, pull up a chair, hit the follow button. A damp or wet uh, tea towel like this. And sometimes I just like kind of wet my chopping board just a little. Because what I've heard is the science behind it, that the whatever makes your eyes sting attracted, to, yeah, the oils go to the water. Softy, is that right? We do IRL, but many, mainly fishing and adventure. We just purchased a houseboat. No way! I love that. That's so exciting. In some of those recipes, bless. Um, I burn a lot of things. Well, we're here to step you through if you need some, um, some cooking skills. Um, I would love to be of service. What kind of food do you like to eat? Sweet or savory? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slice the onion. And this pie is gonna be a potato top pie. So it's an item in the game that we're recreating in Shattered Space. And a big thing about it is, you know, it, the focus is on the meat. We don't want big chunky veggies. So we're gonna do like a rosemary peppercorn pie chopped with mash. Topped with mash, not chopped. I wonder if rinsing the onions might help. Oh my God. As soon as I put the goggles on, the, like it went up into my nostrils. Oh, goodness. If you use a fan, that's what I use in summer. Summer, there's usually the aircon on and a fan. But, you know, I've been streaming. I've been cooking for a long time, but I've been streaming on Twitch for oh, seven and a half years over. And I've been given every uh, idea under the sun about onions. And I cook a lot with onions and I still don't, I still am crying and I still don't understand why I haven't like, got a tolerance. <laughs> it really frustrates me. So now I just look like Heston Blumenthal. All right. So Lizzie, where are you located? What area in the world? And what days do you stream? When can people catch you? Oh. Excuse me. All right. And also my, uh, my knife is a bit uh, very unsharp. So I've been meaning to actually get it sharpened. I just need to contact the guy. But I've been busy. There we go. 
Um, onions and what other veg? Uh, we're going to be doing just onions. Uh, you can add celery and carrot, but the, the purpose of this pie, I want this to be very simple for people to recreate. Um, if you wanted to, carrot and celery, but really, really small to add flavour, do a mirepoix. Okay. Here, a little bit of oil, like that. And then add our onions. We're going to sweat them down. And, you know, we don't have time to let them caramelise. So what are we going to do, guys? Add a bit of salt. But what are we going to do to really cut down on the cooking time? Have you been paying attention? What are we going to do to the onions? To help caramelise them in a short period of time. Not steam, good, good idea though. You add some steam, you could add some water, but there's something that is going to help change the pH, help us caramelise them quicker. Sits on our hands. Add baking soda! Yes, Kieran, yes! Little bit of baking soda, I'm going to give you VIP. Great work. Baking soda, baby baking soda. Little tiny, tiny pinch of baking soda. Hey Google, why do you add baking soda to caramelized onions? On the website tastingtable.com, they say, the baking soda speeds up the Maillard reaction. According to cookbook author and food writer Kenji Lopez-Alt, you can speed up the process of caramelizing onions by adding a pinch of baking soda. Every time I hear his name, when it says like the alt part, I always think of like it's an alternate name. <laughs> Like Kenji Lopez, alt. I I always think it's like an alternate or like an alternative name. It's like magic. Ready? I'm just gonna mute myself real quick. All right. So. I'm going to show you. So we'll kind of separate the onions in half here. Ready? So nothing will happen to these onions, but these onions will get some baking soda. Ready? A tiny pinch, just a little pinch, like that. So nothing's happened to these onions. I'm just going to try and keep them separate. So what's happening is the pH is changing, so they're going to start to break down quicker. Um, they're going to burst open, the cell membrane is going to burst open, and they're going to start to release their sugars. They're going to start to steam, like release the water content, so which is going to create steam to prevent them from kind of um, uh, sticking to the bottom. And... The sugars are going to start to caramelise. The amino acids are start going to start the malad reaction. Not doing a good job of separating. But you can already see the colour change. These are sweating more. They're starting to change colour. Isn't that crazy? To me, these are so much more deeper, a bit greyer, and these are bright, vibrant. So we mix these. Can you see how obvious it is? You don't want to add too much baking soda or they get mushy because they start to break down too much. Right, look at that. Very different, yeah. So we'll mix them together because I don't want some cooked and some undercooked. So little trick from your resident Molly, add a bit of baking soda. Okay, we're gonna add some garlic in here. So we're adding, because this is a simple pie, we need to add flavor, all right? And if you wanna build on the flavor, you can use, choose the wine option. Um, if you don't wanna add wine, you can use water or you can use a little bit of juice. Uh, we don't wanna add too much sweetness though. 
alcohol is used for the flavour and then we, we cook it off in the early stages um, at a high temperature so that it, there's no alcohol remains. It's just the flavour that comes through. But personal preference, if you don't like cooking with alcohol, um, that's okay. It is safe for children um, because the alcohol is cooked off at the end. But I can understand personal religious beliefs and preferences. I'm just trying to find my toilet crusher. Oh, here it is. Always just right in front of me. Okay, two cloves of, cloves of garlic, like this. I need a little bit of cooking of the garlic because we don't want it to burn. So my aim of the stream is that if I can teach you something once a stream, then that's good for me. So about a tablespoon of tomato paste. Okay. Turn down the heat. And we're gonna to start to, the natural sugars in here, we're gonna caramelize, add more flavor. We're building on the flavor. Build, build, build. Okay, so we're just scraping the sides down. And so we want this to go darker, deeper, richer. Like that. And it will start red, and then as we cook it, it'll go deeper and darker and go like a brown color. Okay. But this is where you build the flavor of your pie. Okay, I'm gonna add some rosemary. Like that. We can break this down if you want, or you can leave it whole in there and take it out later. So we're gonna get it nice and deep. All right, so we're gonna add the beef in in a minute. We're gonna cook that down. I'm just gonna grab some wine. So you can use white wine or red wine, whatever your preference is. Um, I like red wine. And then we're adding 500 grams of beef, so a pound of beef. And this, there we go. You wanna break this down so that there's no big chunks or lumps. I've seen those, have you seen, um, they're like a press to, to break up chopped, like um, beef, uh, minced beef? Like, I don't know, it's kind of like a, a it's kind of like a, a muddler, but it has like kind of the things off it, like a muddler for a cocktail, and you, you press it and it squishes out the, the mints. Have you seen it? You know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? It's kind of like this, but it's like, <laughs> I don't explain. It's a long shaft. And then it's got, got like a, a bulbous end and you press it and it, it breaks down your meat. I don't know how to explain. It's a ground meat press. I've not heard of this. It works really well, supposedly. I just, I just struggle with it and just chop it up. It's a long shaft with a bulbous head, yes. For cooking. For cooking. A meat masher. That's it, Dante. Yeah, a meat masher. It's kind of like a mash. 
potato masher, but for meat. So it doesn't have any holes. It's just like a... Oh, my God, I'm going to stop talking. When you see it, you'll know what I mean. You'll be like, oh, my God, that's what Molly was talking about. All right, we're just going to let that fry. Uh, and then I want to show you this photo. Have a blueberry. But then I will show you this photo of what we're making today. Everyone Google meat masher with a long shaft and bulbous head. Oh my gosh. It's there, I promise. I think my search history will affect the results. <laughs> uh, Okay, this is, well, this is in game of what the pie looks like, okay? Can you see that? <laughs> it's really hard to see. That's what it looks like. And then that, this is what I made from it. I think that's pretty cool. That's what we're going to be making today. Oh, good, I swapped the right way. Look at that. It's going to be good. Okay. Whoa, went off the side a bit. Okay, so it's pretty boring flavoured at the moment. There's not really any salt or pepper in there. We've got the rosemary. But now we're going to whack up the flavour with some one. About a quarter to third of a cup. And we want to cook this off, okay? Reduce some of the liquid. Okay, then we're going to go in with... Three teaspoons of stock powder. One, two, three. Like that. We're going to add some milk and we're going to thicken this with a bit of uh, plain flour over top. So we're cooking, the, we're focusing on cooking the liquid off and heating the, the wine in there first. Uh, just checking the recipe here. Tomato paste, Worcestershire. So we need a teaspoon of Worcestershire. Anchovy paste, uh, anchovy liquid. Yum. Have a little taste. Mm. Yum. Okay. So, pepper is one of the key ingredients here, okay? One, to, one plus teaspoon. So we, we want to add a little bit of pepper, ground, freshly ground pepper, because it's going to make like a pepper steak pie. All right? It's going to be spicy, if you want it to. It doesn't have to be. All right.
Beautiful. So that's your meat. Mmm. Fuck. It's a lot of spicy. <coughs> okay. Um, we're going to add in our flour. So here we want two tablespoons of flour. Take the heat right down. I was wondering why this was so spicy just now, because this is the spoon that I scraped out the garlic press with. So I basically just inhaled and, and straight onto my tongue um, raw garlic. So I was thinking, oh my God, that's too spicy, but it's not too much pepper. It was just because it was raw garlic on my tongue. Good one. Okay. So flour like this, two, like that. Break it up and we're just gonna mix this in. So we're gonna start to thicken, create more of a, like a sauce for our pie. And we're gonna add some water and milk, okay? A little bit of groat milk. So we've got groat meat in there. We're gonna add some groat milk. This is just gonna add some fat, luxuriousness. Um, how much am I adding? Quarter of a cup, groat milk. Beautiful. So good. Okay, and then we're gonna thin it out with more water. It is called a chop and mix utensil and I find it great work. It works great. No, thank you. Is that how I say your name? A chop and mix utensil. This is the meat masher. A chop, a mix and chop, sorry, mix and chop, not chop and mix. Dyslexic, Molly over here. Thank you. Guys, Google a mix and chop utensil. Thank you for sharing that. Mix and chop. Chop and mix, mix and chop. Okay. Ingredients here, we're just gonna add some water. Thank you. Okay, half a cup of water. Down here. Remember, it's going to be a pie filling, so we don't want it too thin. So bring it back up to boil so that it thickens, continues to thicken the starch. But we, don't, we want it, don't want it too thin, but we also don't want it too thick. If you've had a meat pie where it's too thick, it's not an enjoyable experience. There we go. Is pronounced Naom, 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 like Naomi, but Naom. Hey, thank you. What's lovely to meet you. Thank you for chatting. All right. So. Is that our group pie? Mm. Yum. I'm going to add more pepper though. I get a bit more peppery. I'll put the pepper. Delicious, guys. Simple. Look at that. So, this you could just eat on its own. You don't have to do the pie fit like into a pie or you don't have to um, put potato on top. You could do it fully encased. You could add this into like a mini pie maker with puff pastry if you want. Mm. Yum. Um, we're gonna go do short crust pastry and I cheated. Hey, Rajee! First time I experienced meat pies was when my parents took us to N-A-A-U. 
North America, Australia. NAAU. We're all doing. Um, what, what kind of... What kind of New Zealand. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Um, what kind of pie did you like best? We are pretty famous Australia, New Zealand for our pies. Better than the UK. Um, I think the the test of a tr- like a really good bakery is how they do a regular beef pie, how they do a pepper steak pie. We, my husband and I, really love pepper steak. I'm back. Welcome back. Uh, we'll check out our potatoes here. All right. So what we need to do is kind of grab a utensil like this, mash it. Looks good. Okay. We're gonna turn our oven on. I need to find my. If I was a pie tin, I think I put it down here. So I'm just using short crust pastry. I have a feeling that this is kind of ruined. Yeah, this is like cracked. When uh, we were in New Zealand, I've only been to New Zealand once and went to kind of Queenstown area, um, Invercargill, Queenstown, Wanaka. Um, Queenstown has really amazing pies. There's a place called Ferg Bakery. Phenomenal pies. Phenomenal. Uh, Welcome in, Grumpy. We've been streaming for two hours and 30 minutes. We've done last time on all things food. We have made shattered space groat ice cream, uh, which we're very excited. I will show you or get it out now so you can see. We made no churn ice cream made out of groat milk, AKA regular cow's milk. But this is a groat which is an animal that you'll be able to find in shattered space. Uh, It is worshipped by the house Varun. And uh, we sacrificed one today and tomorrow we're going to do another one uh, to make groat pie. So we're going to make a potato top groat pie. And then tomorrow we're making pizza. And we use the milk to make some ice cream. That's your 30 second recap. (laughs) Your three minute recap. That poor groat. But it made this. Look at that. Mm. Mint groat ice cream. Mmm. What the hell? Mmm. How do you milk one of those, Molly? I just got it delivered to me. I don't want to be involved in milking. Mmm. Greatest of all time. Mmm. This is so good. Well, we need to freeze it. Yum. Okay. That's on pastry. A little trick is you put these back in the freezer, but I put them in a big Ziploc bag. Stops them from cracking and going dry. Unfortunately, this one that arrived, this was a uh, few weeks old. When it arrived to me, it was cracked. And puff, um, short crust pastry doesn't blend as nicely as puff pastry. And so it's a bit awkward to kind of put back together. So for today, I'm just gonna use a fresh sheet. Okay. Oh, this one's ruined as well. It's like the pastry, the roller, rolled it and it's got like cracks in it. Can you ring, is this one of the products where you can contact them and be like, this product is no good? I've never done that before. Have you, has anyone ever done that? Where if your product um, doesn't arrive in like the best, um, I 
Yeah, a quality guarantee. At Goodman Fielder, we believe in the making of baking, the love of baking, and that's why we guarantee a quality of our product. If it should bring you all the joy that baking and love uh, sharing can give. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to contact the Consumer Advisory Centre. Oh, but I don't like ringing people though. But like, see the issue, not that, I, see this, like that shouldn't happen. That's like, that's, that's a factory issue where their roller has pressed it out. That's no good. Meaning to buy mints. No, I did our grocery order for the week. Can you email? It doesn't have an email. Like that's... Maybe I should just contact Bullworths. What is this? That's my hair mask. My hair's dry. Because he's going through the groceries. He's like, so you just wanted one thing and I bought a whole grocery order. Yes, I did. Blueberries. Exit, do you think that that's an issue? Yeah, but it could have just dehydrated in transit. Dehydrated? Yeah, it's it like cracked. cracked. Yeah. You mean it's defrosted? And then cracked, yeah. I think you should take a photo. I might just ask for a refund from Woolies. Exit, have you ever rung like, and complained about a product? You know how they, you used to have like the hotlines and people, I've heard of people ringing. <laughs> Raj is making fun of me because I said I hate ringing people. I don't, I, I don't like being on the phone to people. I don't like taking phone calls. I'd rather people email me. You're talking about people you know. Yeah, people, even people I know. I don't like, I get anxiety when people are calling me. I like, once I ch start chatting to them, I'm good, but I just don't really like making phone calls. I don't know why. I don't because maybe I've got a bad, had a bad experience and like, just worried about people yelling at you rather than them email. I don't know. So. What about you guys? Do you, do you guys have an issue with ringing people? Maybe it's just a generation thing. Maybe it's just a Molly thing. It's called anxiety. It was the same until I worked in a call centre. Now I find it so much easier. I wouldn't mean to you telling me that I just need to go and get a job in a call centre. <sighs> right, so don't do this. Defrost it a little bit longer. I'm going to let that... I hate talking on the phone. Okay, so it's not just a me thing. Because Xe was like, just ring, ring someone. I put off because I needed to talk on the phone. The insurance. I think that's the reason why the business insurance took so long. Because you, you do all the inquiries and then they call you to ask questions and stuff. Um, oh, God, no. I do not pick up my phone. Silent 24 seven. Um, <laughs> I got a call the, uh, yesterday and Xavier was like, why didn't you pick it up? And I was like, because I'm trying not to answer like unknown numbers, like, cause I get spam calls and things like that. And it's awkward. And I'm worried about those ones where you hear where they like, they take your voice and then they, they, they create like fake mimics of your voice and stuff to like spam your friends and family. So I, I'm not, um, I'm not really taking calls that I don't know. So yesterday I got a phone call from this uh, number that was in Queensland. And I was like, I don't know anyone in Queensland. If it was Sydney, maybe that would be our packaging, like our shipping company. So I don't know anyone in Queensland, so I didn't answer it. Went to voicemail. At the same time I hang up the phone, I got a message saying, hi, this is um, this like cleaning company. Um, we're just ringing to organize like a clean because their head office is in Brisbane. I'm like, if I'd got that message maybe two minutes earlier, I would have picked up the phone call. Now I missed it. 
So I just said to exceed, like I'm trying this new thing and then I'm like, serves me right. Because the, the one time that I don't pick up my phone from a call and I screwed myself. And now you couldn't call back. Because you, you call back, you like went to like a generic line. Where is my masha? Here it is. I hate talking on the phone even when I was a teenager and supposed to love it. I am a phone talker and my wife is a texter. Yeah, like I, I will talk to my, my parents and my brothers and just ring them on the like drive home and things. I love talking to Exceed on the phone. I like, I, if we, if something happens and I'm out of the house, I'll ring him to update him rather than waiting to cut home. Like I like to call him, but I get, when my girlfriends and stuff ring, I really have to will myself to answer. And then once I'm talking, then I'm fine. But it's just, yeah, weird. I get this weird feeling that I get like really nervous when I got a call on the phone. Even though it's way easier to call someone. I mean, opposite call centers suck, but you do learn that you can turn a call around by how you interact. Oh, definitely. In my emails, I literally write, do not call me, I will not answer. Turned voicemail off for the same reason. If you want to call me, uh, want to text me, yeah. That's a good idea. Oh, that my, my, uh, my auntie did tell me, because she rang me the other day and she goes, do you listen to my voicemail? I was like, no. She goes, you did say in your voicemail to text you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. All right, mashed potato. So the variety of potato is important. I use a royal blue potato, like a really nice all-rounder. You want a nice starchy potato. And into here, this is just potato at the moment, salted potato, we're cooked in salty water. Not too salty, it's not salty like the sea where you cook pasta, because uh, potatoes are cooking for a longer time. You, that gives them a greater opportunity to absorb salt, so you don't need as much, okay? And then into here, we're gonna add a quarter of a cup of cream, some salted butter, some nutmeg, and an egg yolk. An egg yolk is just gonna give it some nice richness, and it's gonna give it some flavor and help it brown. The protein is gonna help it brown when it goes back in the oven. Um, people call me an awful friend because I never reply to text, but I just hate texting in general. If you need something, call me. Okay, yeah. I just also like having a, a physical copy of stuff, like, especially with business, uh, you always want everything written down. So I like to have receipts. <laughs> so um, that you can go back to. There's only times where you, if you don't want a receipt or something, then, then I have a call. Um, but majority of the time, uh, people will contact, oh, and that, I also prefer email because people will message us for collaborations or sponsorships or, or um, charity stuff on Instagram. And I'm like, e that, thank you for the opportunity. Please email me because it's all kind of consolidated and all business is done in emails. Okay, a little bit of cream. So we're doing a quarter of a cup of cream in here. There we go. Two tablespoons of butter. But you, if you wanted, you could just do all cream. But butter's just a nice batter fat. And with salted butter, of course. A bit extra salt. Do you normally work with other charities? Yeah. Um, on occasion, we get contacted by a lot of charities for doing work. But we limit to ourselves. We do primarily game on cancer. But um, we... Uh, we limit ourselves in the year. Like, we, I would say we were getting maybe once, or like one or two a week contacting us to do work. And it, it, it is, especially with, like, charities we aren't aligned with, I've never, I don't know before, like, don't know anything about, and um, we won't work with them. 
just because it's the same with sponsored work. Uh, we're really strict on promoting products that we've used before, that we believe in, because the, you're marketing them to your community and they're encouraged to buy or support. And if you're not familiar, it's just really integrity is a, a big focus for us. Um, so I won't work with charities that I don't really believe in. And that's one of the big reasons why we work with Game on Cancer is they don't, they, well, they don't like um, promote one, or they don't like support one type of cancer, you know, like heart cancer or, or skin cancer or whatever. Game on Cancer sp sponsor and support researchers in all different types of cancer. They don't um, discriminate because cancer doesn't discriminate. It's really big for us that when you guys support or we support a charity, the money is going to research that then if there's a, um, a breakthrough lead in one cancer, that's shared in the researching community and it, it like a trickle-on effect and uh, that's how we're going to really combat the issue of cancer in the world is by sharing um, information, sharing research and sharing funds. So that's what we're a big one. But, you know, I think there's other charities that we'd be involved, uh, we'd like to be involved in. For sure. Uh. All right. This is our mash. Look at that. Nice and just like the ice cream, nice and creamy. You can blend it if you want. You don't want to... Um, Blend it too much because then it goes way, way, way too, um, way too gloggy. Uh, what I mean, I can't see it. That's fair. That's the biggest challenge to overcome is building that loyalty with charities. Yeah. And I, it, there's so many different. There's so many charities doing amazing work, but it's. And, and uh, like uh, these days, there's a lot of other ones, smaller charities that you just want to know that they're doing the right thing. They're not just in it to get some like tax-free income or like, you know, to, to scoot around, you know what I mean? They're doing the dodgy thing. So we like to support charities that we are aligned with, that we, we know that they've been doing work in the past because unfortunately there's people out there that um, hide behind charity organisations and they have to have people that are living and breathing the charity and have a, you know, a story behind them because I'm a person that connects with story and I think as hum humans we connect with people's stories and while they're doing it and they're doing it for the right reason. Uh, I'm doing heaps of research at the moment and one of the biggest roadblocks to launching something is building that trust and getting people on board to fundraise. Yeah. Especially when it comes to testing a new platform, for sure. Um, and we, I, I, my preference is, um, is that companies use like Tiltify because Tiltify is established as a platform for creating donations. I don't know the... Uh, what happens behind the scenes with the charities, how much they get and things like that. But it's a preference for us that they go through Tiltify. We've been approached for other charities before that wanted to us to use different platforms. And I don't think the trust, I think the trust is a big thing there because it's people know and are familiar with Tiltify and they'll, they'll donate through Tiltify. But other platforms, that trust isn't there and they don't want to, they don't know how it works or um, that makes sense. Like, if you're not familiar with something, you're not as trusting. There's a cool advocacy group that we are doing around talking about the issues charities face with overhead. I would love to learn about that. Yeah. Because I can, I, I, under, I, I assume people are, some people are building their own platforms because of um, 
middlemen, maybe like Tilt Fire, taking fees and things like that. All right, last but not least, we're going to add in our egg, egg yolk. And that's going to, as I said before, add some more protein. Uh, and then you can add cheese in there as well if you want. I need a piping bag with a star tip. This is completely unnecessary, just looks pretty and it's more thematic, but you do not need a piping bag. Just scoop it on and swirl around. Uh, but this just looks cool. I've added some MS tree. It goes a long way. I think I'm still going through the same bag of MSG I bought four years ago, Nito. All right, so I'm just gonna get the egg white and just put it on the floor for the dog to lick up. I'm kidding, this is a bin. All right, so you wanna work quickly here because of the heat of the potato, you wanna mix in the egg yolk pretty quickly so it doesn't scramble, okay? Beautiful. All righty. Okay. What does the MSG really do, Molly? I've got some for the cucumber salad, but everything I put it in, I've not been able to tell much of a difference. Great question. Uh, so MSG is uh, a glutamate. So you know how like you use salt? If you put salt on steak, it enhances the flavor of the steak and the, the meatiness. And in, um, we add salt into food to not only change sometimes the molecular structure, like with, you know, changes um, with bread, it makes bread taste that bready flavor. Salt is a flavor enhancer. Same way as MSG is a flavor enhancer too. So glutamates are naturally occurring substances in tomatoes, oysters, lot, so much, for so many foods. Um, it's basically just a powderized form of glutamate, monosodium glutamate, and it's a flavor enhancer so yes, you will, uh, in, it enhances flavors of like salad, but the way you, you get it the most is in things like potatoes, meat, um, you know, like beef, uh, salmon sauces. So if you put it in stock, it'll enhance the flavor of the stock. So you only need a little bit of it, um, but some things you won't, it won't really change the flavor much of. Uh, but then other things that really enhances and really does wonders. So sauces, stocks, um, uh, potatoes, I really love it. Like chicken stock, um, sorry, not chicken stock, chicken salt is adding a little bit of um, MSG with salt and it enhances the flavors of potatoes. Like putting some in here, or like, oh, it makes it taste so much better. So my, if you, you're wanting to, in, um, get into MSG and like learn about it. Um, do some Googling and your personal preferences. Um, some people like it, some people love it. There is a lot of um, mis miseducation out there, but anything saucy um, like meat like this, um, put some in, uh, in your meat sauce. Uh, when you're making a soup, really, really great. So it's just a flavor enhancer, yeah. Okay. So potato chips, it's really good. Mm. Yum. Okay, so here is a pipe and this is a piping bag. What you wanna do, rather than, you know, it's, you've seen chefs do it where they, Hold up the piping bag like this, and you have to have big hands, and you're gonna scoop the mashed potato into the piping bag, right? You gotta hold this up, and when you're doing it with a big piping bag, it gets very heavy. So just get yourself a pipe, pop it in there, pull it over the sides. Hands free, carefree. So you can just 
like that, and fill your pipe. So, shit, I did the wrong thing. Hold on. Fill the pipe later. Because you've got to put the piping nozzle in first. <laughs> Beware, thank you for being here. Hope you're having a wonderful night. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, just put this at the end, like that. And get your scissors. I just realized I turned that, thought I'd turn that ignition on, turned on the heater. There we go. Try again. Lucky I was only a few scoops in for sure. Just gonna turn the air on. Oh. Is that hot or cold? I think it's cold. All right, bang it. Now we put our potato in here. Like I said, it's not necessary. It just looks cool. I give it a little shake. It's a great question, Awadic Moon. Um, how many people do use MSG or are familiar with it, don't use it, had a bad experience? I find that if I do use too much of it, I have a little bit of a sensitivity to it. I think that it may be a link to my headaches that I've been getting. Um, but I haven't, I'm not, I still use it and I'm not, set that that's why it's causing my headaches and I get migraines but could be a possibility okay that ladies and gentlemen is our mash let's see be able to do some pretty little rushes. Mm. Um, it's annoyingly hard to find. Grocery stores online these days. Shouldn't point. Um, scissors is that you? Um, I find that I get it at Asian grocers. It comes in a big bag. Takes you a long time to get through. Um, or online. These days, for myself, I agree, there's a lot of ingredients that are really tricky to find, especially if you don't have an Asian grocer, a good one nearby. Um, but we have an, an African store that also sells Asian food. We have an, an they call them Orient, Oriental store, but they sell Indian food, like all different types of Asian food and, and um, international cuisine. But these days, Amazon's amazing. Google's are like, the internet's amazing. There's a potato chip product here in the US that has MSG in it. And if I have a lot of chips, it tingles my mouth a bit. Okay. I would say, uh, I would, I would uh, think that there's a lot of potato, majority of potato products, a lot of, uh, have MSG in them. If you have Genki Mart near you, they have a huge range of different bags and shakers of MSG. Okay. Genki Mart, interesting. Quantum mechanic, whereabouts are you in the world? Maybe there's people here that can give you some suggestions. I've never heard of a Genki mark before. Okay. So, now this is better. We're just gonna press this in here. You can par bake this, which I recommend, but we're not gonna do it today. I'm gonna YOLO it. Okay. Like this, and then we're gonna get this guy. East Coast USA. Yeah, I would say Amazon is your best friend. Have you tried? You probably have. Okay. 
And grab it like this. Oh, need a bit more. Like that, and we're just going to patch quilt it, patch it up. This. And then just trim off any excess. Oh. Need to get his knife sharpened. Not very sharp. I never thought to buy food off Amazon before. Yeah, there's so much stuff, especially if you're in North America. There's so much stuff that is available that we don't have here. Um, I wouldn't usually buy stuff off Amazon, but um, food-wise. But now that I learn you're, you're from America, and food products, like shelf stable products, heaps available. A Roselli, I think, is the one that um, has got me into looking online for everything, um, for food-wise, because she's bought so much of Amazon, like chips and international food, um, chicken, chicken salt, chippy salt. Hey, Ozzy. Okay. Yeah, and get Prime as well. Use um, Prime. Um, then it gives you Twitch Prime sub too, which is a bonus. Um, uh, our, we play yearly with um, Amazon Prime, and it just renewed yesterday, I think. The little air bubbles there, lift up the side and just like let them out. Don't let them be trapped. Be friendly to the little air bubbles. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. So we, we should, we should do the right thing, shouldn't we? We'll, we'll, we'll par bake this for a few minutes. Car baking takes a long time and I'm a very, if you've been around here for a while, you know that I'm a, quite an impatient person. Amazon, you can order a thing and get it the next day. Yeah, if you're in the, in the East Coast, not in WA, it's very rare we get next day. I use a mixture of rice and baking beans, beads. I saw that there's baking beans now. If anyone knows Erin uh, Jean McDowell, she does baking beans. Okay, I'm gonna pop that in the oven. Cool. Oh, inspection went well. We're, um, we're just waiting on our packaging and then we're about to go live. Oh, good. It was way easier than I expected. She's a really lovely lady. Yeah, thank you for asking. Okay. So puff pastry, a short crust pastry is short. There's not much puff to it. Um, it is a bit more crumbly than other pastry, like, you know, puff pastry. So we're going to cook it, but you just kind of eat it on its own. Maybe a bit of salt. Like it's not, you can't really do too much with short crust. I don't often buy it, honestly. <clears throat> if I'm making pastry, I make my own. But this is just an easy way for you guys uh, for the recipe to be remade. 
like that, and then you can dip this in your pie. Or soup. Soup's good. Like that. And then a little bit of smoked flaky sea salt. Beautiful. Into the oven. Okay, so we'll cook that for about 15 minutes and then we'll take it out, put our pie in, then we're good to go. So, we've done our groat ice cream, groat pie. Hmm. What else, what else? I did have the idea to make mochi. Mochi's in the game, but it's one of those, it's not very thematic. Now let's try this ice cream, see if it's... Mm. It's gonna be so good. Okay, so imagine you're in space, your space bowl. Uh, if you were on Mythical Kitchen last meals, what would you have made? I know of Mythical Kitchen, I don't know last meals. Is it what your last meal would be? I'm calling every bowl I own now a space bowl from now on. <laughs> yes! There you look, it's a space bowl. It's better, it looks like you're in space. Okay, ready? Space ice cream. Do you prefer blue milk or groat milk? Oh, I think groat milk. Look at that. Look at that groat milk ice cream. Look at the colors. That looks so sick. What do you think? Blue, blue milk is just so boring. Groat milk's where it's at. There's just so much more color in groat milk. Look at that. Mmm. It doesn't need to be fully frozen. It is so good. It is so good. What do you think? Would you try it? Mmm. That's what I want to hear, quantum mechanic. Out of this world. Mmm. Put some of these shards on top. Guys, so good. I actually prefer it tastes like more of a mousse when it's semi frozen. Like this, compared to like fully solid. Look how good the colours go with the bottom, the overlay. Mm. It would not have occurred for me, uh, occurred to me to put sea salt on pie crust to bake it off. Cinnamon sugar, maybe, yes. Learning something new. I'm a, I, I prefer savoury head of broccoli. Much more of a savoury person. Mmm. So the recipe for this, hey Google, what is 600 mils in fluid ounces? 600 milliliters is equivalent to 20.288 fluid ounces. Oh, 20 fluid ounces of heavy whipping cream, half a tin, I, I personally don't do it too sweet, so half a tin of sweetened condensed milk. You beat the cream, so thick and stiff peaks. Then you add in the, um, the condensed milk, whip it again until it's stiff. Then add um, 
vanilla bean paste. I added some food coloring and peppermint extract, but you can flavor it at whatever you like. Um, you can add different flavors. You can add chocolate, you can do cocoa powder, or you can add some melted chocolate in there. So easy. 600 mils, 600 mils. So it's about, um, how'd you get the colors? You have to watch the VOD, but no, it's very easy. Uh, I got a bowl and then I divided it into three, four colors. So I had some plain white ice cream. Then we added some, well, no, it's really four colors. So we've got pink, purple, light blue, and dark blue, and then white. The white helps the colors be seen. You want a bit of plain ice cream so that the other colors pop. Like that. See? Look how good. Kids would love this, adults would love it as well. Mm. Groat ice cream. Some extra sprinkles. Yeah, you can just put some extra sprinkles. Um, I bought some extra sprinkles. Um, but I don't know where they are. The ones that actually are on this, I don't know where <laughs> I put them. But I can get some silver sprinkles. My sprinkle order doesn't come. Guys, I bought $270 worth of sprinkles um, for the bakery. And I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm buying another nearly $400 worth of chocolate today. And that isn't even very much chocolate. It's 12 and a half kilos of dark chocolate and five kilos of white chocolate. It hasn't dyed my lips, just my tongue. I find the, um, the oil food color doesn't, um, doesn't stain as much. You could freeze dry. I don't have a freeze dryer, do you? Don't they, don't they, they're very expensive? There we go. These ones look extra crunchy. So I am low key, high, actually high key, high key, terrified of starting a business in the middle of a cocoa epidemic. Cocoa situation is scaring me, guys. There is increased prices of cocoa. Will we, will we survive? And I want to make sure, like, my focus is keeping the brownies affordable. What are we making today, Crazy GD? Welcome in. We are doing pie, groat pie, and we just did some groat ice cream. My Amazon suggestions are just fancy sprinkles because of you. Maybe you should buy some sprinkles. Um, I don't even understand how freeze drying works, to be honest, quantum mechanic. Talking about freeze dried ice cream, I would love to have like a little portable freeze dryer that we could do like freeze dried snacks, freeze dried brownies. Um, but I heard they're really expensive and they're really big. Do they use like um, liquid nitrogen or something? Are they, the running costs expensive? Hey Google, are 
freeze drying machines expensive? On the website extension.usu.edu, they say, disadvantages of freeze drying, cost. The machine itself is not the only cost. What is the cost then? Okay. Here's the definition of cost of an object or action. Require the oh, payment cool, of a specified sum of money before it can be acquired or done. Cool. Hey Google, what are the ongoing costs for freeze dry machines? Sorry, I don't understand, but I found something related. Do you want to know, is there a free streaming service in Australia? No. Hey Google, what are the ongoing costs of freeze drying? On the website patchworktimes.com, they say, just supposing someone with the highest electric costs runs the freeze dryer every day, it could cost an additional $84 per month in electricity. I use my freeze dryer probably close to as much as anyone and it probably only runs about 20 days per month so 20x $2.80 is $56. It's not too bad. Um, hey Google, how is freeze drying done? How does freeze drying work? According to Wikipedia, freeze drying, also known as lyophilization or cryodesiccation, is a low temperature dehydration process that involves freezing the product and lowering pressure, thereby removing the ice by sublimation. Okay. Hey Google, explain like I'm five how freeze drying works. Sorry, I didn't understand. Whatever. Clear as mud. Okay. Lyophilization. Layers of what did you say? Lyophilization. So it's a vacuum pump with a freezer attached. Yes. Yes. A vacuum pump. So we. We vacuum out all of the air and make it cold. Is that, is that how it works? Leophilization, basically. Oh. I wonder what a fr <laughs> You know when you get those thoughts that, what are they called? The, the, um, the thoughts that come into your mind that you shouldn't say out loud. I just thought to myself, <laughs> Like getting, you know, like old machines, you think about like people getting stuck in them or like situation, like people getting stuck in a, yeah, an intrusive thought, like people getting stuck in a washing machine. I was like, I wonder what a, I wonder what a freeze dried human would look like. Imagine getting st like someone falling asleep in a freeze dryer and what that would that would be an excruciating way to die surely getting all your your water in your body turning to ice crystals crystals you can do cryogenics now is that the same thing no but you puff up when you're freeze dried have you seen freeze dried food it like puffs up and it goes crispy I don't think you can come back from that why would you fall asleep in a freeze dryer? I don't know. People have fallen asleep. Cats have fallen asleep in washing machines. Have you tried an anti-griddle? I've never heard of that. Those guys from the three body problem basically did that. The three, you guys, do you guys tell me all this stuff that I have no idea? Hen Solo? Um, yeah, but like, I suppose you're, it's cryogenics with a vacuum. So then you're just, I don't think you'd come back from being fro freeze dried. I don't think you, you would just rehydrate and turn into liquid, wouldn't you? Oh. It sounds like it uses pressure so liquid turns into gas instead of ice. Yeah, okay, gas. I think that would be a really painful way to die. Just add water. You think? But then you're saying like you can do cryogenics. I'm pretty sure the idea around cryogenics you're meant to come back from, it like preserves you and then you, they wake you up and they thaw you out and then you're alive again. I don't think you can come back from being freeze driven. Freeze driven. Freeze dried? Freeze. Let's get freeze driven. Looks better. Um, that com cupcake that popped into the lower right corner Bought back a bad memory. Okay. 
Um, some extended family descended upon elderly mum. Sugar overload sent me for a nap. Oh my goodness. It's a really good, don't, don't hate on my, hate on my cupcake. It's a very delicious cupcake. It's not too sweet. It won't get you, send you into a, a, um, a sugar overload. Anti-griddle is like a super cold slab to freeze chill fast. Oh, like they do with the ice cream. Freeze dry is the Timu version of cryogenics. Hey, I like Timu. I got a phone call from my auntie asking me what I think of Timu and she's like, if I buy things, will I get scammed? I'm like, nah, I love Timu. I bought so much stuff on Timu for the new business. Um, it's so good. I don't really, I don't, I haven't really had success with buying clothes, but like knickknacks and like molds and things like that. Um, different like office stuff works really well. Just don't expect it to be great quality is usually my advice. Yeah. That I would definitely agree with that. An anti-griddle. Are they expensive? We can make those little rolled ice creams. One of the things they've discovered about tardigrades, what is a tardigrade? Is they have a crystal that forms in their cells. When you dry out, it replaces the moisture, add water, and they come back to life. That, though the, when you're talking about tardy, tardy grades, is that talking about like cryogenics? A crystal that forms in their cells and when it dries out, it replaces the moisture. Just add moisture and they come back to life. Wow. You have tardy grades in your backyard. What the heck is a tardy grade? I feel like it's out of Doctor Who and I've got like a post box in my backyard, you're telling me. Microscope little bugs like things, water bears. Ah, oh, that sounds really, just think of like a, a tiny little panda or a um, polar bear just swimming around in my backyard in like really little polar bears. They're indestructible. Are they, are they, water bears are so cute. How big are these? Like microscopic bears? Like I got microscopic polar bears in my backyard. I can't repeat some streams, so I'll copy paste tardigrades. Known colloquially as water bears are moss piglets. Oh my gosh. Are phylum of eight legged segmented micro animals. A micro animal. The moss piglet. God, these things are getting cuter. Moss piglets and they're micro animals. I'm a fan. Okay. I've had enough of you par baking. You're coming out. Cute or terrifying, depending on who you are. Oh, should we be scared of them? If anyone is, I wonder if anyone has made tardy grade gummies. That, how what do they look like? So you tell me. So I've got microscopic mini polar bears and mini piglets in my backyard. Are they are they found in soil or water? God, so diverse. Yesterday I saw a bird pick up a, um, like a little mini slider. Or what are they, like little skink? I think they're called a skink. And you're telling me there's like polar bears in my backyard too. Cool. I would not describe them as cute. So they're ferocious. They're like little dinosaurs. Dragons. Okay. Take this out. Oh. Look at that. Parbaked. Beautiful. And now we're going to put our filling in. Our filling is cold. Pretty cool. Look at that. This pie tin is a bit big. I would probably recommend doing a smaller one. 
We can double the meat mixture depending on how big you want it. Don't, ap don't ever apologize for the distraction. We love distractions. Anything to distract us from making cooked food. This crust looks amazing. Thanks, I made it myself. <laughs> I didn't, I bought it. But I did prepare it. Okay, so you wanna hold up like this, straight up and down, and then you wanna squeeze and then pull up, okay? And you don't have to do this, you just, uh, if you want, just spread the, the mashed potato on top. But in the game, it looks like a star, and I just thought it'd be fun. And then you just work your way around. And you can do this in mini size as well if you want. Like mini, um, like muffin tins. And wherever you can see filling, just fill it up. So confused by the dish. It looks like icing, but we have potatoes and we call it a pie. But there's meat. Yeah, uh, it's, not, it's not dinner, it's dinner. It's meat. Mashed potato pie. It's a beef pie. Very common in Australia to have a potato top or a beef pie. How cool it looks. I know it, it's um, shocking for some people. They have a meat pie, and this is very common in Australian food. Like a hot dish, basically. It's like a shepherd's pie, but with crust, yeah. So there's an item in the game called a groat pie, and so I'm just recreating it. See, I just outed myself as a non-Aussie. Whoop! Boo, 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 boo! Non-Aussie in the chat, non-Aussie in the chat. Kidding. Totally okay. You're, but now we're just gonna bring you over to our dark side. And you just get this. Oh. My potato. Okay. So you can chuck it in the oven like that. Chuck it, throw it in the oven. But if you wanna make it extra gouda, extra better as we say in the biz get yourself some keju some chose get yourself some chose you can you don't have to put it back in the oven but if you want to it's even better with some cheese this is not the grater i want but it's the grater i'll have to use it's like a fancier casserole. Yeah. Things are fancy in Australia. Did you know? Okay. That. Parmesan or cheddar. Unsafe. And then it's very hot. Don't do that. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. Okay, I'm gonna put it, we call it the grill, but you would call it a broiler or a salamander. We're just gonna brown up the top. Let's see, cook the pastry a bit more. Wham bam, thank you, Starfield ma'am. probably song that I could sing. We were discussing this earlier, and if you haven't answered, a salamander. Have you never heard of the term salamander? Words are hard. A salamander. A salamander. So, hey Google, what is a salamander? According to Wikipedia, 
Salamanders are a group of amphibians typically characterized by their lizard-like appearance, with slender bodies, blunt snouts, short limbs projecting at right angles to the body, and the presence of a tail in both larva and adults. Sure. All ten extant salamander families are grouped together under the order Yoridila from the group... Hey Carina. Google, stop. Hey Google, what is a salamander grill or broiler? On the website bluestarcooking.com, they say, the salamander broiler is a standalone appliance that can be How located on a countertop or above a range that uses powerful infrared ceramic broilers for everything broiling perfect steaks to melting cheese on casseroles. Because you know when a, like a, a snake or a salamander or a lizard or whatever, they like lay out in the sun and they get cooked on the top? That's what happens with in the kitchen, in a, in a restaurant. You go under a salamander, like a broiler, and you get cooked on top. Salamander, see, I taught you something today. You've more you know. Mmm. So, try this next time. You put some grated cheese on there. This is pastry. Don't use cinnamon and sugar, just use salt. Crisp, delicious. A bit of curry powder when we were kids. Um, there's a recipe in a woman's day book, woman's weekly book maybe, and it's pastry with grated cheese and um, curry powder. This is just pastry. Pastry offcuts that are just cooked. Mmm. It's got some smoky salt on there. Dip that in hummus. Yeah. Dip it in soup. It's just a great way of using leftovers rather than putting them in the bin. Tried any Poppy Cook's recipes? I have never tried. Hmm. We were talking about Poppy Cook's in Discord two weeks ago about the 15 hour potato. You can't teach me stuff this quickly. I need time to absorb and replicate. I could try to grow. When I was a kid, my mum would bake those leftover pie um, pieces and then put jam on them, given my mum as well, but a different type of pastry. My mum would do it with puff pastry, then you'd cut it in half and put jam and cream. Mmm. Miguel, it's good. So yeah, just some boring old pie crust. Okay, I'm just gonna put this pastry back in here. If you're just joining us, welcome in. Exclamation mark Starfield. Go and check out the game, it is out now. Starfield, Shattered Space. Very, very exciting time to be alive because the game on itself, on its own was good. I really liked it. The campaign was phenomenal. Um, it was phenomenal, it was really good. And I'm excited for the expansion. Available on Games Pass and PC. I got my game code, um, but I said I can't play yet because I got work to do. I'm gonna get these voiceovers for the new videos that are coming out soon and prepare the website. And when I got my to-do list done, then I'm gonna start playing because I'm all, I'm all in. I'll play for hours on end. There we go. So make sure this is zipped. Zip, your zip locker zipped. Pop that in the freezer. It's your pastry. Stops it drying out and cracking and going bad. Okay. Now we're just waiting for our pie to be ready. That's a game. I thought you were boosting Australian Space Force. Yeah. This is a game. Starfield, Shattered Space. I'm not just dressed as a mechanic for no reason. I'm a spaceship builder. Didn't you know? And goats are our native animal. Yes. This. So a little introduction to the game. Let's watch the trailer. This is the new trailer. 
어? Bethesda. It went live yesterday, so it is Shattered Space Chocolate. You should check it out. Um, we can get a link to it. Go and follow me on Instagram. Like the and comment, please. Please. I really love you for that. Hey, Google, what's the time? It's 11.40 a.m. 11.40 a.m. We're waiting. Sorry, Brav part of it I don't understand. Nothing. Don't worry, you didn't need to understand anything beautiful. Beautiful boy. Da -da 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 -da. We can watch it together. Just while we've got some time. Oh. Whoa, 26. Woo. Good guys. Follows, comments, appreciate it. Ready? You need me? Ready? That one there. Hey guys, we are back with some more Starfield recipes because the new expansion Shattered Space is released next week on October 1. And what shatters better than chocolate? So we are making some peppermint chocolate bark and we're gonna color it. So I've got some milk chocolate and then some white. We're gonna color it with this oil-based food color. And we're using oil-based, not gel, because gel, the, the water in the gel reacts with the chocolate and makes it cease. We don't want that. <laughs> so pick your favorite colors. We're starting with our milk chocolate base. Then we have dollops of our colors and you just wanna kind of spread it out evenly. Look at that. We're going with pink and purple here and blue to go with the Starfield Shattered Space theme, but you don't have to choose whatever colors you want. And we're going to swirl it to make it look like a galaxy. Look how pretty that looks. Then, of course, top with some sprinkles and chuck in the freezer. When it's solid, shatter it and enjoy. Stay tuned. We've got a few more recipes coming. See ya. What do you think? 
Hey guys, we are back with some more stuff. Back with a brand new track. Check it out. It's mollymax.com. Not miss mollymax.com, instagram.com forward slash molly. Um, not only the tardigrade master. How do you become a tardigrade master? Um, but has the best welcome ins. He's probably the nicest, most genuine guy on Twitch, and he has met all the f- main food and the, the main food and drink drinkers. Cool AF. You're saying that I'm not a main food and drinker? What are you talking about, man? Um, we'll see. I don't know um, what is they, they're live now. Oh, I don't. I, I don't raid people to do that. Um, uh, I don't care about them highlighting my website thing. That's nice when they do, but um, this is why you need to be in the group. What what group? Um, uh, oh, what does he stream? Oh. Oh. oh no, we're going a bit dark. Icarus flew a little bit. The food and drink circle in the US. All about science, nice. Oh, good on him. Um. All right, all right. A little bit close to the sun. On one side. Da 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 da. I wonder if this would do anything. Beautiful. So I don't know what's. Yeah, I think because there's no fan, it's there's a hot spot in the oven in the back. Just got home from a le- eighteen hour day. Sheesh. All right, we just come in time then. We're gonna have some groat pie. Look at this. So ideally, it should we cook for longer? But we got no time. that someday all right mm. we don't have a space plate I don't think <gasps> do we have a space plate we got a space plate as well as our space bowl Space plate. Because it seems to be everyone in space has used metal. Space plate. Are you ready? Oh. What do we have here? This is groat pie. Oh. My. <laughs> it didn't come out as good as last time. Hold on. So this is groat, which is from the Stafford game. Oh, yum. I'll just do a cross section. You can see inside the pie. How about that? Mm. So you don't need a groat. I'll Google a groat. This is a groat. This is from Starfield. So... 
Neato. Um, Groat are a kind of animal that is worshipped by House Varun, and they're um, they're very uh, highly regarded. The jawbone is used in um, worship ceremonies, and the meat is here. We use some of the milk and the meat. Look at that. Yum! Take this bit of pastry away. Mmm. Tastes a lot like beef, yeah. Look at that. Mashed potato, groat. Yum. Kind of looks like shepherd pie, but yeah, it, it's a meat pie. It's kind of like shepherd's pie, but with a pastry base. We call it potato top pie in Australia. Um, this has got rosemary heavy with um, pepper, like uh, peppercorn, black peppercorn. Beefy, a little bit of wine in there. So good. So good. Thanks. Yeah, that's it. So usually you can get small ones in Australia. We did a family size big one. Mm. Okay. Smash or pass? Let me try. Mm. Delicious. So this is a recipe that's coming out. I think this one's gonna come out next. We're gonna go sweet, sweet, savory, sweet, savory. Um, so I've got to do the voiceover for this video. It's already filmed and edited. Mmm. Is that strawberry banana pie? A bit more savoury than strawberry banana pie. Um, I don't know if potato top is Australian, uh, West Australian, maybe. But I've had, I think I've had one in New Zealand. Um, so these are really good. I've created a video and a recipe from, for Starfield, for the team. Um, that's going to be released to the community, just like the chocolate that we made last week. Mm. Could we make a pie with ruse? You mean like in general, could we make this pie or, or in general pie? I honestly don't like ro um, kangaroo. It's really lean and it's really gamey. I would rather eat, see I like venison, I like duck but I don't like kangaroo. Also the smell of kangaroo is gross, but you could if you wanted to. It's a uh, high quality, uh, gamey meat, full of iron, um, lean. A lot of people like it, uh, but it's expensive and I don't like the flavor. But yeah, generally you could recreate it for sure. All right. Ladies, lads, legends. Look at what we have made today. Groat pie and groat ice cream. Look at this. Look at this. Groat ice cream. Look at that. Shattered space groat ice cream. So the main part of it, three ingredients, heavy whipped cream, um, condensed milk and vanilla. Then we added uh, shattered space chocolate. We didn't do a drink. We didn't, we decided not to. We were too busy talking about um, space amoebas or, or space polar bears in our backyard. Uh, it's mint, slight, uh, a small amount of mint in there because we've got the mint chocolate as well. So vanilla mint, I would say. What is your DOTD? What do you think? Dish of the day, dish of the day, yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Pie? Pie or ice cream? Pull up. Look at that. Beautiful ice cream. Look at the colors. I 
I think they match really well with the overlay. Groat is the goat. Yeah, baby. Mmm. Yum. So uh, make sure you enter the poll. So tomorrow, oh, we forgot to make the dough. We can make the pizza dough now. So I probably, before we finish, I'm gonna make pizza dough. Because if I don't do it now, we won't do it. Before we finish, I'm gonna make, boom. Tomorrow we're making pizza. Tomorrow we're making groat pizza. Seriously, tomorrow's pizza is so good. We're making this gro spiced groat pizza and I made it a few times to test. Exceed and I are in love. I think you guys would like it too. So we'll make the dough now. We're gonna halve at my normal dough recipe. Uh, really easy to put together. So give me two seconds. We need bread flour, uh, yeast and honey and water. And then this afternoon, rather than doing a two-day recipe, I'm going to just do a one-day recipe. So I'm going to make the polish now, leave it on the bench, and then we'll finish off the rest. Um... All right. Um, so into here, we're going to add in, so usually 300, so we're going to add 150 grams of bread flour, 150 grams of water, no salt because we'll add that later, add the salt and oil later. And this will make three pizzas for tomorrow. Usually we make six. Oh, I have a question, Loom, about the website. I've been having issues with my WooCommerce checkout page. Uh, the checkout and the cart, when you put it, when you make it into um, two columns, the columns are like super narrow and I can't figure out how to make them, They're, everything is all fucked up. It's really annoying me and I don't know how to work it out and I don't wanna have to pay for another plugin to be able to make it like a nice custom checkout at this stage. Is pizza, to, um, pizza, it's tomorrow pizza day? Yes. We're making pizza tomorrow, Starfield pizza. Okay. Uh, a size issue. I, I've tried like changing the page template to WooCommerce um, like full width and everything says it's full width, but I can't work it out. It's been causing me issues. So flour, water, yeast. A little bit of honey if you wanted to, but just three ingredients. You usually set this aside um, on, at room temperature for an hour, then put it in the fridge for 23 hours, 16 to 20, 24 hours total. There we go. And then use a this. Under the light. Okay. 
Give this a mix. Should be really like sloppy. Your three brownie box is missing. Three brownie box is missing? What do you mean? Cut page needs a little help and the checkout. Holy hell. Need some investigating. Yeah, can you see it? Like everything's on full page. It's the same with some of my other pages. When I had sections, the sections were full, you could stretch to full width. And now that I've, like, since I've got um, Elemental Pro, now they're containers. But the containers, even though they're full width, they don't stretch across the screen. So I think that there's some theme, maybe a theme issue. been refreshing the oh the th um that that doesn't exist anymore we changed the three box we changed the product so um the idea is that we have four products we do loaded brownies we do um naked brownies we do uh themed brownies and custom brownies and then within the product page then you have the sizes it just keeps it um, way less confusing for people and having like 15 million products of Theme brownie, th like theme brownie three pack, three, um, theme brownie six pack, three brown, uh, brown, themed brownie slab. We've compiled it and we're just trying to see if this works. Way less um, confusing for people. All right. Yeah. So you have th four products and then three sizes for most of the products rather than having three sizes and variation products. Make sense? Kiss. Chef's kiss. Okay, simple is best. Keep it simple, stupid. There we go. Leave that room temperature for an hour, then we're gonna put it in the fridge for maybe about five or six hours and then make the rest of it, let it sit overnight and then we'll make pizza tomorrow. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right. <clears throat> oh, you know the deal. That's it. Okay. All right, all right. So, um, next stream Starfield chai latte boba. We're going to make chai latte boba and groat pizza tomorrow. So, it's not three days and 20 hours. I think the timer has been turned off. It is uh, 20 hours from now. Exactly. It's 12 o'clock on the dot. Is that a good, is that a good omen? Uh, okay, 20 hours exactly. Let's go. Uh, I'm not going to raid scant that person's stream. I appreciate you letting me know. I'll check them out. I've never raided them before. Um, and we're going to raid... If this person's still alive. Are they still alive? Yeah. We're going to read Titanium Chef making giant Reese's um, peanut butter cups. Okay, so. Exclamation mark raid, and you've got exclamation mark raid two, Nito. Now we've got two raid calls. I will, I will check them out. I will check them out, but I always like to choose someone different, and um, I like the suggestion. But we will, I'll, yeah, I'll go and check them out first. Uh, Titanium Chef, lovely person, um, been in our stream before, I'm pretty sure, and uh, making peanut butter cups that I know we, like sound good. I don't really like peanut butter myself too much, but I, I would like to see a giant version mainly. Um, okay, copy and paste the raid call messages, one or two. Uh, everyone, you don't have to have the emote, their, their follower emotes. So if you follow it to the channel, you have them and be able to raid with us. Um, thank you for those who have contributed to today's stream. Thank you for the subs, gift subs, resubs. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the raids, most importantly. Um, but we will see you tomorrow. 
Take care, brush your hair, be good to yourself and those around you. And I will see you next time. See you tomorrow uh, with another, our last, our last Shattered Space stream. Is peanut butter a th big thing? It's not, I wouldn't say it's huge. Uh, we don't have it as in a session as in, in America with, um, uh, hold on, I haven't even started the raid. Um, um, yeah, I would say that we don't have a, an obsession with peanut butter. Being going to America, every there's a variation of everything that is peanut butter flavored, like ice cream, chocolates, flavors. There's always a peanut butter variation. It's very interesting. Um, so guys, copy and paste the raid call messages, which one suits you. Um, thank you for being here. Let's go over raid Titanium Chef, make an appearance, um, copy and paste, represent the community. If you haven't hit the follow button, come and hang out with us Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, usually, but, or choose Sunday night, Tuesday night and, or Thursday night. Okay. See ya. Join discord. Bye-bye. Thanks mods.